It's a perfect night for football in the mid-state and a perfect night to renew a rivalry. For the first time in 21 years, the Tennessee State Tigers are back in the borough to take on the Blue Raiders of Middle Tennessee. Hi, everybody, and a very pleasant Saturday evening to you, wherever you may be. We're live from Floyd Stadium here in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, alongside Caitlin Runyon and Alex Myers. I'm Jake Rose, and you are watching college football right here on ESPN3. Alex, you got a great matchup tonight. It's an old-school OVC matchup as Tennessee State comes to town to take on the Blue Raiders for the first time since 1998. And both of these teams are sporting brand-new quarterbacks. And for Tennessee State, it's Cameron Rosendahl. Yeah, Rosendahl beat out last year's starter Michael Hughes. He did so in a performance which he totaled one touchdown through the air and a touchdown on the ground. Five touch, or five red zone appearances for their offense, though, last week yielded only one touchdown. Two knee field goals. If they want to keep up with Middle Tennessee's high-powered offense, Rosendahl and his offense have to convert touchdowns, not field goals. And for the first time in four seasons, Brent Stock still is not the starting quarterback for the Blue Raiders in their home opener. It's Asher O'Hara's turn. First game taken over for a legend, and you go to the big house in Michigan. Not easy to do, but he played pretty well. Two touchdowns, an interception. Coach Stock still talked earlier in the week, Jake. They've got to see more consistency from both O'Hara and the offense as a unit. Look for them to try to put a full four quarters together today. The last time these two teams met, Aerosmith had the number one song on the Bot Hot Billboard 100 with I Don't Want to Miss a Thing. You don't want to miss kickoff coming up. It's Middle Tennessee and Tennessee State renewing the rivalry. Fun Zone. You're going to love the new True Blue Game Day experience. Get your tickets now at GoBlueRaiders.com slash tickets. Just moments away from kickoff, and there's a look at our two head coaches. On your left, Rod Reed in his 10th season as the head coach for the Tennessee State Tigers, and Rick Stock still on your right in his 14th, manning the sidelines for the Blue Raiders here in Murfreesboro. Middle Tennessee started the season with a 40-21 loss last weekend, as you mentioned, Alex, in the big house in Ann Arbor. And Tennessee State picked up the victory in the John Merritt Classic last weekend against Mississippi Valley State with a 26 to 20 win. Absolute beautiful night for football here in Murfreesboro. Temperature about 85 degrees, not a cloud in the sky. Couldn't ask for much more. No place I'd rather be on a Saturday night than in a college football stadium. And you know, Jake, both of these teams, coaches you hear it every single year, doesn't matter, high school, college, professional, Coaches a lot of times say you make the most improvement and the most strides with your football team between week one and week two. Both of these teams did some good things and they did some, some things they needed to improve upon last week in their openers. I'm really looking forward to see kind of which team takes advantage of the, the, the practice this week and which team comes out here ready to go and learning from their mistakes. Chris Rowland and Dreon Johnson are deep for the Tennessee State Tigers. And we are underway here in Murfreesboro. Far sideline. And crossing the 25-yard line is Daron Johnson, the freshman. Taking it out for the Tennessee State Tigers. And Cameron Rosendahl, the red shirt senior, the transfer from the Georgia Military College will lead the Tennessee State Tigers out for their first drive. 22 of four, or 25 of 42 through the air last week. We mentioned the opener, 330 yards, only a touchdown. You throw for 330 yards, most coaches are going to say you should probably at least throw for a couple of touchdowns. He did run for one, so this is a guy who can do a little bit of both. Uh, but I think when this team gets inside the 20, 30-yard line this week, they've got to score touchdowns, not field goals, as they did a week ago, because this Middle Tennessee offense can be potent. You don't want to let them, if they let you hang around, you don't want to blunder those opportunities. Roberson in the backfield, the leading rusher a year ago for the Tigers. He will take it right side, and he swallowed up as he crossed the 30-yard line, a host of Blue Raiders. In on the stop, 
And this is a Blue Raider defense that returns nine starters from a season ago. A lot of experience and a lot of talent. Yeah, they really do. There's some of these guys that you just look across this roster and you feel like, are these guys in their seventh or eighth year of college football? I mean, you've heard their names year after year. They've got a chance to be special. Second down right side is Roberson. And he's going to be dragged down by big number 90, Rakavian Poitras. The junior from Clarksville, Tennessee. Missed all of spring practice earlier this year. Had leg surgery from an injury he suffered in the New Orleans Bowl. This is a guy with a lot of potential, though. Last year, uh, before the season started, he was uh, preseason all-conference all USA mention uh, after the last season, excuse me. But, you know, if he can stay healthy and, and get that leg right, he's got a chance to be really good. Third down is Roberson on the far sideline again, and he's going to pick up the first down. And a nice push by that offensive line of the Tigers, an offensive line that is going to be shuffled up quite a bit tonight. Yeah, it, you know, they're dealing with a couple of guys who, who potentially could, you know, be dealing with injuries, and you don't know how much they're going to play. They've got a freshman left tackle that played really well last week up for the Newcomer of the Week Award in the Ohio Valley Conference. And they got some youngsters scattered throughout this Tennessee State team, but got a lot of potential. First down, Rosendahl will pass for the first time, going far sideline. And on that far sideline, it's Steven Newbold. And I think somebody just got mossed on the opening drive. They just got mossed. And that play, there's there's not much prettier in football than a deep pass when a quarterback just trusts his receiver. He threw that one before the receiver even looked back to get it. He kind of threw him open. And even at that, the receiver just made an excellent play. What a catch. And this is where we talk about. Look at the ball is right at the 30. They're not quite in the red zone technically yet, but this is the area where they started to struggle and stall out last week. Let's see what they do on the first drive. Newbold just needs five more catches to etch his name in the Tennessee State top 10. And Roberson picks up another carry, picks up a handful just shy of the 25-yard line. So what have we seen? I think three runs so far, and I think all three have been off that right guard. And they've had a lot of success. Excuse me, the one went out wide. But all runs have gone to the right side. And quite frankly, that was one of the worst runs they've had. And they still picked up four yards. So they've found something they like off that right side. Got some experience over there as well. And early on, it's working. Mentioned that offensive line will be shuffled up. Will James, usually the right tackle, is in at left tackle as Jalen Gupton, the freshman, was a game time decision as Roberson lowers his shoulder to the 20 yard line. Right. And he's going to pick up another first down. Right on cue, I said everything they're doing on the running game has gone to the right side, and they say, hey, that's all you think we can do. We'll just turn around and give it off the left guard. And that time they get five or six yards, pick up a first down, and now they're officially in the red zone. Only one touchdown and five red zone trips for this offense last week. A lot of Tennessee State fans at home going, okay, can we convert? We don't want a field goal. We want six points right here. Look like they may be throwing on first down. Sean McCauley has checked in, the sophomore from Chattanooga High School. And it's an end around this time. It's to Chris Rowland, who was the John Merritt Classic MVP a week ago and last year as well. Had a career night last weekend against Mississippi Valley State. 11 catches, 172 yards, a touchdown, 235 all-purpose yards. Yeah, prove me wrong. I said it looked like they're going to come out throwing. They spread them out wide. And they just gave Rowland a lot of room, a lot of real estate to work with when they got the Middle Tennessee Blue Raider defense spread out like that. He is a playmaker. You want to get the ball in his hands in space. And right now, there's nobody on him real close. Second down, Rosendahl is going to keep it himself. He's going to take a pop from Blankenship, just shy of the first down. And it's going to be third down again. A huge opportunity here for the Blue Raiders on defense. As, well, as good as Tennessee State has looked on this drive, as consistently as they've just kind of ran the ball down your throat, you can get a stop right here and force a field goal. Then psychologically for Tennessee State, they start thinking, here we go again. Two yards to go. You've got to think if they're running the ball right here, they brought in the fullback, will they go off the right side? They've had a lot of success. Middle Tennessee doesn't really have any linebackers off that side right now either. Jumbo package, Rosendahl under center and up the middle. It's going to be good enough for a first down and refusing to fall is DeMarco Corbin, the senior from Euless, Texas. 
Corbin's a, a, an absolute load. They split him out wide earlier like they were going to throw a, a flat a pass out to the flat to him. They faked that, ran it earlier. Now they bring him in as a tailback, and the primary back gets it. He's off the sideline, and they bring the speedster back in. So the second third down conversion on this drive for the Tigers. As Big Blue is knocking on the door of the Blue Raiders. Roberson, the guy who just came in at tailback, he can also do some stuff for you out of the backfield as a pass catcher. So you've got to be aware if you're on defense. And this play is going to be blown dead. Offense number 70. Five yard penalty. Still first down. All of a sudden, Tennessee State shooting themselves in the foot. Don't want to do that, make a habit of that down here inside your opponent's 15 yard line. So 10th play of the drive. First and goal from the 13, swing pass to Rowland on the right side, shoved out of bounds. He'll pick up a couple and it'll be second down. Chris Rowland also knocking on the door of the Tennessee State history books. Right behind Stephen Newbold in career catches. Newbold came into this game with 108. Rowland with 101. Now Rowland with 103. And Newbold with 109. So a very dynamic receiving core for Cameron Rosendahl to work with here tonight. Rosendahl, blitz picked up, checks down, near side. And a host of Raiders are there to meet Miles Cabot, the tight end. And not much doing in another third down for the Tigers. Some offensive coordinators have the, the train of thought or the school of thought that, you know, when you get it down the red zone, they'd almost rather have the ball out at the seven, eight, nine yard line than they would at the two or three because basically at the two or three, everything is kind of scrunched up. You can't really spread the defense out. Well, to me, I'd rather have the ball closer, but it's third and nine here, third and goal from the nine. Obvious passing down right here. Let's see what they do. I would look for Rowan. Rosendahl rolling right, looking for the end zone, and he throws it away. And it'll be fourth down and a big, big stop for the Blue Raiders on the opening drive, one that started and looked like it was going to be six early on for the Tigers. But the false start penalty comes back to Hunter. Yeah, they tried to hit Chris Rowland there on kind of a deep corner route. And what they did is they rolled the quarterback out to the right. And the, the negative of that, the downfall of that is you basically cut off the left half of the field. And so once his first and second option were covered as they were, had nowhere to go with the ball except out of bounds. Rowan in the shotgun on fourth down. He's going to keep it himself, throws it to the end zone, and it's picked off by Reed Blankenship. The trickery backfires, and Tennessee State comes away empty-handed. Wow, I have never seen that before. No, and, and, you know, you start to think maybe Tennessee State's going, you know what, we got criticized for, settle, for settling for field goals, but we're not going to kick a field goal here. But to me, early on in the game, you've got a good drive. Take the momentum and get you a few points on the board. Didn't happen, and I was it, – it's kind of no right. It's kind of, kind of voided out right now. But if that would have been caught for a touchdown, I would have kind of – if I was Middle Tennessee, I would have said – Let's go back and look and see if he wasn't in front of the line of scrimmage when he threw that. Yeah. Because he faked like he was going to run it, and to me it looked like he was a little bit in front of that. But it doesn't really matter in the scheme of things as Middle Tennessee will get it. But because it's in the end zone, they'll get it out the 20-yard line and a chance for a response and a chance to get the first points of the game. So Roland throws his first career interception, and Reed Blankenship has his seventh career interception. Led the Blue Raiders in the category a season ago, and Asher O'Hara will take over at the 20-yard line for the Blue Raiders. Looking downfield, it's Ty Lee makes one man miss. He's out to the 35 and out of bounds. Big pickup of about 16 for the Blue Raiders on their opening play. Very simple round.
here. He just kind of drags across the middle about five yards past the line of scrimmage. But from four, in order for that play to work, your other receivers have to move the linebackers out. And they've got to be able to have that play develop downfield. Nice protection by the offensive line allowing that. Ty Lee now just 30 all-purpose yards away from 3,000 for his career. As Terry Strotter making his presence known on the first offensive drive for the Tigers. And yeah, number 66, the tackle. The left tackle, Will Gilchrist, just missed the block right there. They had that set up. Gilchrist had to get his block, and he just couldn't get out there quick enough. And because of that, it was a one-on-one -on -one tackle. Nice play from Tennessee State. Gilchrist, one of five offensive linemen that got their first start in a Blue Raider uniform a week ago in Ann Arbor. As O'Hara will keep it himself and not really going anywhere. As Makai Brown was in on the stop. So they'll give him credit for about a yard and a half right there. You know, last week, the rushing attack for Middle Tennessee was nothing to write home about, but the leading rusher for 32 yards was Asher O'Hara. So he's got some wheels on him, but, you know, typically you've got to have a little bit better blocking than that. Third down, O'Hara looking downfield. Got to get rid of it. And off the hands of C.J. Windham. And nothing doing for the Blue Raiders on their first drive as they will be forced to punt. Yeah, that was kind of a dangerous pass. I thought it was going to get tipped by a backer. It wasn't. It got through, but then it kind of fell off the hands of C.J. Windham. And, you know, it's one thing to overthrow a guy or throw a ball into the ground, but when you get a tipped ball up towards the back of your secondary, a lot of times that can spell trouble. Middle Tennessee, quite frankly, pretty lucky that that one didn't fall in the hands of a white jersey. Kyle Ulbrich out to punt for the Blue Raiders as the special teams unit shifts. Ulbrich gets it away. Nice punt. And Roland will let it bounce deep, and it'll be a touchback. So good decision by the senior wide receiver. And with 6.29 to go in the first quarter, we are scoreless here in Murfreesboro. Stay with us on ESPN. What would you like the power to do? This week, the Middle Tennessee family is mourning the loss of one of their own. Brandon Archer was a recent Middle Tennessee grad and a former football player. For more on Archer and how his teammates are honoring his memory, here's Caitlin Rennie. Thanks, Jake. On Labor Day, just one day before Archer should have turned 22, he lost his life in a tragic drowning accident. This year, on each helmet, there will be a sticker with Brandon Archer's initials, B.A., to in remembrance of his life. Jake. Thank you very much, Caitlin, and certainly our hearts go out to Brendan's friends and family. Tennessee State takes over at the 20-yard line, 6.29 to go after the Middle Tennessee punt. And they're going three wide. Rosendahl handoff up the middle to Roberson. And a pickup of about two. Tennessee State, you got to start wondering, you know, in the back of their head, are, are they going, here we go again after that failed red zone attempt on fourth down. Look back at last week and their struggles, and I think you just got to say, hey, it's early. We got down there with relative ease on the first drive. Let's just go back down and do it again. Yeah, 72-yard drive turns into an interception from Chris Rowland on a punt attempt. Here comes the blitz, batted down. Rosendahl keeps with it, throws it downfield again. And he takes a hit on the back end of the play, and a flag is down inside the 10. He's getting ready to say, you can't throw the ball forward <laughs> twice in one play. No even though likely it's going to be open because nobody's <laughs> going to expect it. It's a heck of a pump fake if you could do that. But the flag came late, but it did indeed come. And Rosendahl was a little bit shaken up on the play. Hopefully he'll be all right. He's still Illegal he's a tough pass. kid out there. He's still on there. On the offense number 17, it was the second pass of the play. It'll be half the distance from the goal. Loss of down. Third down. But for a guy who uses his mobility to get outside the pocket and stretch out plays, you got to wonder, Came up a little bit gimpy. We'll have to keep an eye on him and see see if we can see anything happen to him at the end of the play. So he takes a hit at the end of the play. Just kind of falls awkwardly a little bit on that leg afterward. I'll be interested to see what Middle Tennessee does here. You kind of lay back and just say, hey, we're not going to let you out throw the sticks here, or 
you look at you look at your the opposing offense of Tennessee State and go, hey, they're four yards away from us getting the safety, and it looks like they're going to do the ladder and try to bring a little pressure. Yeah, Scott Schaefer, the defensive coordinator, not afraid to bring some pressure. He does this time. Screen pass to Rowan near sideline. He's got room. Chris Rowan taking it the distance all the way. Ninety-seven yard touchdown for Chris Rowan. If you blink, you just miss that. Chris is an absolute speedster. It's the one negative, Jake. If you bring pressure and it gets beat, there's not a lot of help behind. A great block on the outside by the receiver, and then just too much speed for Chris to get caught right there. What a response. All of a sudden you're thinking things are going backwards on the drive, and in the blink of an eye, a snap of a finger. You got six points on the board. Antonio Zita. And the punt is blocked. The kick is blocked. Zita comes down with it. And he's swallowed up at the 20 yard line. And a nice job by Zita to actually catch that ball mid air to prevent Middle Tennessee from scoring two points. Yeah, because if Middle Tennessee would have caught this. Uh, especially if Reed Blankenship, yeah. number 12, the speedster at safety is back there. If he catches that, nobody's catching him. So, heads he played to try to jump on top of that ball while it was in the air and not let Milton get a crack at it. And it looked like Blankenship was the one that actually blocked that punt. It sounded like he blocked it with his bicep he got in there. So, Blankenship has an interception and a block point after a tip. But the Tigers lead 6 to nothing with 5.34 to go in the first. As your life grows, so do your needs. And with Bank of America and Merrill, the benefits you get can grow too. As a preferred rewards member, you can enjoy priority service and exclusive discounts. So your growing life can be more rewarding too. What would you like the power to do? So a 97-yard Chris Rowland touchdown. Excuse me, Chris Rowland touchdown. Gives Tennessee State a 6-0 lead. And a short kick to Ruben Garnett on the left side. He'll take it to the 30. He's got a seam inside the 40 to the 45. So the short kick by Caleb Mosley backfires a little bit as the Blue Raiders will have great field position to start their second drive. You know, when the, the NCAA in, implemented the rule a year ago, a season ago, that if you fair catch it or the ball goes in the end zone, you get it at the 25 instead of the 20. But Stockstill and his team, they did some math and realized that if you just did that, you'd be one of the tops in the nation in your as far as your average starting position off of field position off of kickoffs. That time, they don't do it very often, but they actually got a chance to return one right there, and boy, they made a pay. Asher O'Hara back out for the second drive as Middle Tennessee picks up the blitz. The underneath route to Zach Dobson. He's in to Tigers territory, brought down just inside the 44-yard line, 45-yard line. Dobson, the sophomore, H back. Really impressed with Asher O'Hara's footwork on that play right there. The pocket started to collapse, but he collapsed, but he stepped up. He didn't panic, and he kept chopping his feet. Delivered a throw. Tylee in motion. Comes back for the screen pass across the middle. He's going to be close to a first down. Ball's loose. Ball is out. And that fumble was recovered by Dante Ferguson. The senior jumped right on it. And Middle Tennessee hustling to the line. Still haven't signaled. I, one yeah, way I didn't or the see other. a signal. I guess no fumble. Yeah, that ball's definitely out. Yeah, that ball is loose. And they're trying to. College coaches challenge on the sideline. Rod Reed sprinting down the sideline, trying to get the attention of the officials. Got a little help from the Tennessee the State faithful that are here. Under review. Now right down there in front of the Tennessee State band and fans that they came out in droves today. And we'll have to get another look here, but off first look to me, it looked like the ball was pretty clearly out. As he started to go down, the defender kind of pokes it out. Let's watch it. Right here. It's tough to see from that angle. 
We had a different angle a moment ago, and I think the ball was out. Looks like Ray Coggins was the first to make contact with Ty Lee as Dante Ferguson jumped on it. As there's a look at Rod Reed, the head coach for the Tennessee State Tigers. It was a pretty good Tiger in his own right back in the 80s. Actually, the career and season leader in tackles for the Tigers as we get another look there at the fumble. Yeah, that's the angle for me that I think is pretty definitive, and it does have to be that in order for Tennessee State to get the ball back. And it looks like across the way, Rosendahl, if Tennessee State does indeed get the ball back right here, it looks like uh, he's going to be good to go back out after being shaken up a little bit on the last drive. And we're going to get another look here. And it was Dante Ferguson who jumped on it. After review, it was ruled that the ball came out before the runner was down. It'll be Tennessee State's ball on the 23-yard line, first and 10. Game clock so a huge turnover. Put four, five, four on the game for clock. the Tigers. Four, their first turnover Thank forced you. this season. We'll add about six more seconds or so back onto the game clock. Back to 4:54 here, and what's been pretty exciting first quarter here in Murfreesboro. Yeah, I've seen a couple plays that don't happen a whole lot. An interception thrown by a wide receiver on a fourth down fake punt attempt. Blocked point after attempt. 97-yard screen pass for a touchdown. Legal forward pass. Game's had a little bit of everything so far. Straight up the middle is Sean McCauley as he gets his first carry of the evening. Well, guys, on that Tennessee State offensive line, I've seen doing some barking back and forth with a couple of the Middle Tennessee defenders early on. And this is what you get. I mean, you can say it, it hasn't been played in a long time, but these a lot of these players are from the state of Tennessee. A lot of them played against each other. A lot of them know about the history. I'm sure Coach Reed and Coach Stock still both talked about this rivalry and what it meant back in the day. And, Hey, it may not have been played, but this is still a rivalry, and these two teams, just 40 miles apart, they know each other fairly well. Five wide for Rosendahl. It's a three-man rush. That ball was tipped at the line and almost picked off by DQ Thomas. And I think that was Tyshun Rinder that got a hand on it at the line of scrimmage. And I think it was a left end at the top of your screen. Watch him just get that bear claw up there and almost does enough to get... DQ Thomas to be able to intercept that one. Sometimes that's just about as good as a, as good as a sack if you're a defensive lineman. If you can't get back there, just stick your hands up, especially when you've got the size and length that Render does. 6'4", 256 pounds. The redshirt senior has got a lot of experience. He knows what he's doing out there. Third and eight. Render going up against Cam Dooley. And here comes the blitz. And Rosendahl's going to have to throw it away as Malik Manseal was all over him, and that's going to force Tennessee State to punt. And Middle Tennessee, and I think rightly so, they're kind of trying to bargain with the officials and see if this was intentional grounding because while there was a running back, I believe, that had went off to that side of the field, he was nowhere close to where Rosendahl pitched the ball onto the ground. I'm uh, not sure that ball got back to the line of scrimmage yeah, I, either. And I don't know that it, I, I definitely don't think it did that, which is another good point. However, it's not going to be called, and... The punting unit will come out. You don't want a, a, a box snap or anything like that because you're not all the way backed up, but you're pretty back, pretty far back deep in your own territory. Caleb Mosley into punt for the Tigers. And he just gets it off. A high kick, short kick. Ty Lee will call for a fair catch as a flag is down on the far sideline by the 50. As Ty Lee called for fair catch. About the 46-yard line, mark at the 45. And I think the it may be holding or something because it, you know, based off where the flag was thrown, it's it's going to be after the punt, which means it should still be Middle Tennessee's ball regardless. During the kick, holding on the return team number four, it'll be 10-yard penalty from the end of the kick. First down. It's Quincy Riley, the cornerback. He's a freshman from Columbia, South Carolina, and we're going to take a quick break with 3:55 to go. Tennessee State leads. Chris Rowland, the leading receiver a season ago for the Tennessee State Tigers. 
Already having a big season here in 2019. Had 175 yards, and that's a big hit on the far sideline. As Ruben Garnett got leveled on that far sideline. Nice clean hit. Looks like Armstrong who got there first from a corner position. That's a big hit from a corner. Neiman Armstrong getting the start for DeJour Nesbitt, who's banged up. Actually, both cornerbacks for Tennessee State dealing with some injuries. Dominique Williams was a game time decision. Nick Harper Jr. filling well, in for him. And while this is a you know a rivalry game, it's important both teams, both coaches and fan bases want this. You gotta remember for both of these squads, conference plays coming up. O'Hara going deep down the far sideline. And Jimmy Williams had to play defense on that one as that ball stayed up in the air a little bit too long. As Ronnie Killings almost had a pick. And I just say that about conference play coming up because you know, this is this was conference play. There may be a couple guys who you'd say, hey, risk it, you're hurt, but maybe you're not injured. Uh, but, you know, in a game when conference play is coming up and ultimately both of these teams are trying to win their conference, you know, if the guy's nicked up a little bit, maybe they might say, coach, say, hey, let's get you healthy for a couple weeks down the road as fourth down punt in coming up. Roland's back deep. That's always a dangerous place. Returned seven punts a week ago for... 60 yards, he'll call for a fair catch at the 25, and that's where the Tigers will start their next drive with 3.55, excuse me, 3.11 to go here in the first. So Middle Tennessee, three drives and nothing to show for it. As Cameron Rosendahl We'll lead the Tigers back out onto the field. Talked about Roland a lot, and deservedly so. And, you know, how much do you think that this means to him to play in this game and to score that opening touchdown for 97 yards? And, you know, a lot of people don't know this, but his brother actually played a few years back here at Middle Tennessee, and he's from Ravenwood High School just down the road. And, you know, this, I'd say he's got a little chip on his shoulder. You know, he's a guy that's undersized, and in a lot of ways he's probably been undervalued by a lot of teams uh, and a lot of people and other, you know, other coaches and, and staffs. He's come to play for Tennessee State, and, and boy, has, has he played well. Roberson around the right side, and nothing doing. Second and ten. That right side of the offensive line did well for Tennessee State offense early in the ball game on that first drive in particular. But Middle Tennessee has kind of stiffened up here the last drive or two. You wonder if Rosendahl may have to kind of stretch the field out a little bit to get that run game churning again. Rosendahl back in the shotgun, tight formation and two wide. Newbold at the top of your screen. Rosendahl looking for him on the far sideline. Did he tiptoe in? And yes, he did. Nice catch by Stephen Newbold. The second nice catch that he's had to go up and get. It's asking a lot for a guy that's just 5'10". Trust me, I can tell you all about it. <laughs> Earlier we saw Gregory Great Jr. limp off the field and Quincy Riley, the freshman, has subbed in for him. Roberson right side, he's got room, he's got enough for a first down, punishing. Roberson carries, flags down. Javante Moffitt as he stepped out of bounds, but we have flags down. By Javante Moffitt. Moffitt's a guy who had 36 tackles a year ago. He's not a small guy out there and you know, he, he took the brunt of that hit, though, and boy, what a finish to that run. There was no foul on play. It'll be first down. So first down for the Tigers. Forget about the flag. The seventh first down for the Tigers here in the first quarter. And it's a fresh first and ten. And 
And McCauley nowhere to go and finally dropped by a host uh, Blue Raiders. So that's DeMarco Corbin, excuse me. Second and 12, actually lost yardage on the play. Corbin in the backfield with Rosendahl. Four-man blitz. Rosendahl steps up and in and out of the hands of Roland. And Rosendahl's lucky that wasn't picked off. Yeah, it wasn't a perfect pass by Rosendahl by any means, but you know, that's a dangerous play again if it's tipped off the hands. Kind of lucky a Blue Raider didn't come out of there with the ball on the interception. Third and long here at your own 33-yard line. You don't want to do anything crazy. Obviously, you're going to have to get about 12 yards to get the first down, but you don't want to do anything too risky back in your own territory. Let's see if they'll gamble and try to get this or if they'll maybe play it safe. Rosendahl pressured up the middle, and he's going to throw it away again. And another fourth down stop by the Blue Raiders. Yeah, I don't know what I don't know what the design of that was if it was a flaw or if the Tennessee State offensive line just kind of Messed up and whiffed there because the offensive line blocked the play as if it was a screen And what I mean by that is when it's a screen play a lot of times the lineman will, will jam the defender defensive line for just about a half a second Then they'll let him through to set up the room for that screen the defensive line broke through right away like it was a screen, but there was no one there for Rosendahl to throw to and when you've got to go 12 yards down the field typically you've got to have enough time to let those deeper routes develop, and it just didn't work out. Mosley out to punt again. Blue Raiders coming. Gets it away. Another high kick, another short kick. Ty Lee waving off his teammates, and it'll be downed at the 32-yard line by Ray Coggins. And with 34 seconds left in the first quarter, Middle Tennessee is going to try and put up some points. And remember I said this, 34 seconds to go in the first quarter. I would not be shocked to see Middle Tennessee block a punt before this one's over. On the first two punt attempts of the day, Middle Tennessee has gotten within about a hand's length away from blocking on both events, or on, on, on both, both tries, both punt attempts. And I would not be shocked to see them finally get there at some point this game. They've gotten really close. Throw across the middle, good enough for a first down. And that's Jaron Pierce. With his first catch of the night. Yeah, it was all about timing right there. The pocket was clean, and O'Hara just got to step up and fire a bullet into his wide out off the left side, the strong side of the field. Now it's right back in the middle in between the two hashes at the 44-yard line. Sets him up in a first down. Jaron Pierce, excuse me. First down handoff right side. He's got room. He cuts it back up the middle. And that's going to be good enough for another Blue Raider first down. As Brad Anderson... Has his first carry of the evening. And it'll move the sticks for the Blue Raiders. And it'll end the first quarter. And that's the that is the end. So the after the quarter. first 15 minutes, we've seen a little bit of everything here in Murfreesboro. But Tennessee State has a six-point lead for the first time in 20 years. Are you ready? We are underway here in the second quarter. O'Hara going to keep it. Makes one man miss, now two, back to midfield. Finally, rodeo down inside the 30, but after a first down, and that's one way that Asher O'Hara can really hurt you. It is, he led this team in rushing a week ago, and you can see why he's got some wheels, but that play was set up, a really a headsy play. He had an option to kind of throw a little screen right out. I was going out to the, to the, to the strong side of the field. He faked it, got the linebacker to move, and he had some space. Anderson up the middle, lowers his shoulder, picks up about five. Good to see Brad Anderson back. He missed a lot of time last season. Suffering from a fractured ankle against FIU. Missed the last eight games. Actually sat out all of spring drills. Recovering from surgery on set ankle. And he's going to cut back and get wallops inside the 20. Ball is loose again and a flag is thrown. Flag was late. I wonder if it may be... I don't know, you almost have to think it'd be on the tackle, so that would maybe leave like a targeting, targeting or something, yeah. but it was a big shot for sure. I didn't see where the contact was initiated, if it was at the helmet or shoulder or where, but it was a big hit, and regardless, it was a first down.
to me, it looked like he had enough for it. After the play was over, personal foul on the office under 65. It'll be 15 yards from the spot of the foul. It'll still be first down to 10. And it will be first down because Anderson got it across to the 19 where he needed to be for the first down. But then obviously one step forward, two steps back. Coach Stocksville talked about that in his press conference earlier in the week that they did some things, but they weren't consistent. They would do something good, then they'd turn around and do something bad. And there's a prime example of that right there. You set yourself up inside the 20, inside the red zone, and get a penalty after the first down. And now it's first and 15. Or first and 10, but they're going to mark it back 15 yards, I should say. Penalty was on Marcus Greer. Middle Tennessee is going to have a free play. O'Hara going deep. And Jack Bruce went up the elevator shaft to get that one. Couldn't come down with it. But Middle Tennessee will move forward five yards at least. One of defense number 91. Five yards Still first down. Raymond Horton a little overzealous before the snap. Let me just tell you, that's not a... That's kind of a scary place to be as a receiver when you get across the middle between two safeties and a quarterback leads you high. Now, there was nobody around him to, to really knock him down that time, but you don't always know that as a receiver. You don't have eyes in the back of your head. And once you take that elevator flight up the stairs, as you said, if you're in the air like that, you're primed and ready to be hit hard. And again, two plays in a row, a guy jumps offside. Another free play. O'Hare going deep again, this time for the end zone. And batted away, good defense on that far sideline. As it looked like Neiman Armstrong was on the coverage as Isaiah Upton was the intended receiver, but another flag. Offside, one of the defense in the 48. Five-yard penalty results in the This first time down. it's Makai Brown, the senior transfer from Alabama in his second season here at Tennessee State. Defensive lineman, it's not always easy when, the, especially when the quarterback's got a good hard count. But all you're doing is watching the ball. If it doesn't move, you don't move. It's as simple as that. And I know it's not always that easy, but simple fact is there's never really an excuse for jumping off sides because your your eyes should be at that ball. First and ten for Middle Tennessee. Here comes the blitz, and it's Makai Brown chasing O'Hara who gets away with it, and it's caught on the far sideline. That's C.J. Windham. And that play didn't happen without a beautiful block by the running back, Shanton Mobley. He, he really just, I mean, if he didn't make that block, there was a couple of guys coming in. The fullback picked up one guy, Mobley picked up the second. And that play never gets off if he didn't, didn't hit on that block. Second and three for the Blue Raiders. First time in the red zone here tonight. Mobley up the middle, and he's dropped at the 15, and it'll be third down for the Blue Raiders. Yeah, if you're Mobley, you get a good block like that, sometimes the coaches will intentionally go back and say, hey, we'll give you the rock, give you a touch real quick, and that's what happened. Wasn't able to make too much of it, but sets him up still in a reasonable third down, just a couple of yards to pick up, and they continue Anderson back in as the tailback now to have that fullback in there out of the shotgun. Tight formation for the Blue Raiders as O'Hara checks to the sideline to get the call. As Anderson will switch sides and go on the right side of O'Hara in the shotgun. Never see O'Hara under center. High snap, O'Hara comes down with it. Far sideline, Ty Lee, and he's going to have enough for a first down. Ty Lee making his 37th career start. That is the most on this team by six games as looks like a Tiger is shaken up on the far sideline. And we're going to take a quick break, but Middle Tennessee knocking on the door with 12-11 to go here in the second. Stay with us right here on ESPN3. Rookie. Welcome back to the second quarter here in Murfreesboro. If you are interested in helping those affected by Hurricane Dorian, 
Please contact the American Red Cross. Donate now at www.redcross.org slash ESPN. Of course, every little bit helps. Of course, all of our thoughts and prayers and our heart goes out to all those in the Bahamas that have been affected. Absolutely devastating. And all those in the Carolinas and Georgia as well. We're thinking about you tonight here in Murfreesboro. First and 10 for the Blue Raiders at the 12 yard line. Trying to get their first score here tonight. O'Hare looking for the end zone, looking for that corner. C.J. Windham, a little toe tap. And incomplete is the call on the far sideline. And the Blue Raider bench does not agree. But it's going to be second down. Let's get another look. Yeah, that's having faith in your, in your receiver right there just to throw one up. And that was awfully close. Boy, Windham's a big target. And he needed just about every inch of his body to go up and grab that one out of the air. More good defense by Neiman Armstrong, who's filling in for the injured DeJordan Nesbeth. Toss left side. Anderson just able to rope it in. Well, I don't think he was down. And he dusts it off and runs to the end zone. The side judge also said that he was down, but it certainly looked like he fell on top of the body of Ja'Shawn Bryant. Yeah, I'll just say this. If he was ruled down, which they use ruled down, but if that's the case, there wasn't a very prominent loud whistle. No. I'll say that. And, and they and just showed the replay here on the board, and we're going to show you one right here. That's touchdown. And Rick Stock still is going to call a timeout and try. That is her first. To get a review on this play, it certainly looked like that Ja'Shawn Bryant, excuse me, Ja'Shawn Bryant pulled Brad Anderson down on top of him, but it didn't look like that any part of Anderson's body actually touched the turf except for his feet, and they kept moving towards the end zone. And he just kept turning right right towards that goal line stripe, as you mentioned, and what a turn of events this would be. The problem I have with, with this whole outcome is it's, it's always tough because you don't want the offensive player to get cheated out of what they should have had. But the problem is if, if I'm a defender and I hear a whistle blow, I'm stopping. And I'm not going to get penalized to go tackle somebody after the after the, the penalty's blown. So to me, it's kind of like a well, if you've blown it dead at the beginning, how can you go back and say that it wasn't even? You know, we'll see. Right here, I think that's going to be the defining look. And uh, his left knee. Yep, you're right. Left that's knee. right. We jumped the gun. I jumped the gun. <laughs> Apologies to the side judge. Yeah, I got it right. But hey, I'm all about taking an extra look. As you know, as long as you're making sure that it's the correct call. And third and long here, they could get a first down without scoring, but. There's not a lot of room to do that. Mobley in the backfield. O'Hara back to pass. Steps up, throws the end zone. Almost picked off. Ty Lee got jammed up in the Tigers secondary. Talk about guys running the pick play downfield. Uh, two, two Blue Rider receivers run into themselves and just about turn into an interception. Instead, they'll send the field goal unit out and let's see if we can get our first points of the night for the Blue Raiders on the board, or will there be some more magic from the uh, kick block unit, as we saw for earlier from the Middle Tennessee unit? Cruz Holt out for the kick. Looking to score his first points on the season. And it's good. So Middle Tennessee is on the board, and it's a 6-3 to three ball game with 11-0-9 here in the second, and that's a big stand for that Tennessee State defense. So 12 plays, 55 yards, four and a half minutes milked off the clock for Middle Tennessee on the scoring drive as Cruz Holt knocks in his first field goal. On the season, he is now 20 of 26 for his career. And there's a look at Rick Stockstill, who just yesterday was inducted into the Florida State Hall of Fame. Sure. Stockstill is a quarterback for the Knowles back in the early 80s. Played for Bobby Bowden. Bobby Bowden has certainly has an illustrious 
uh, coaching tree and guys that he's made an impact on their lives. And think about one man like that, the impact he had on just one of the coaches. For instance, Coach Rick Stockstill, and how many players Coach Rick Stockstill has impacted and how far down generations and generations of young men that these guys have molded. And certainly Coach Reed for a decade doing that at Tennessee State. It's great to have guys like that in, in our communities. The kick is bobbled and finally picked up at the 10-yard line as a flag comes flying in after the fact. That was a line drive kick from Cruz Holt as Kenyon Garlington, the redshirt freshman from Antioch, fielded the kick on the run, couldn't handle it. During the return, holding on the return team the 34. It'll be half the distance to the goal, first down. And it looked like Yusuf Ali came down there for Middle Tennessee and just wrapped him up by the feet. You take that about half the distance back, it's going to start this offense inside their own five-yard line. And last time they had this happen, they were at their three, and I was sitting there going, hey, you don't want to get a safety. The very next play, Roland takes it 97 yards for a touchdown. So Middle Tennessee, they blitzed that time. They were aggressive. I wonder if you'll see them maybe back off in order to try to prevent something from like that from happening. Now, Tennessee State in the shotgun, as both of these teams are primarily for all snaps in their offense. That snap has to be a good one. If it goes over the head, that's two points for the Blue Raiders. Yeah, we really haven't seen Middle Tennessee bring pressure since that screen pass. As that snap was low, Roberson will take it up the middle. And he'll get popped a couple of times, but he's going to have himself a first down or at least close to it. Had they brought more pressure right there, maybe you could make Tennessee State pay for that low snap as it takes them, takes them a, another about half a second to get that play going than it would have if the snap was on target. But Middle Tennessee decided to kind of lay back there, and Tennessee State took advantage of that on the near miss. Roberson averaging just under five yards a carry. Quick screen pass, far sideline. Roland makes one man miss, and he's going to be brought down. We've got the 18, 19 yard line. It's going to be second down. Roland with his third catch, and that will actually put him over the century mark for the game already, of course. Most of that coming on the 97 yard play, but. Already a big half for Chris Rowland, back-to-back 100-yard games. As you mentioned earlier, a product of Ravenwood High School in Williamson County, Tennessee, just one county over as Roberson will take it to the left side and not a lot doing. Good stop by Jordan Grant on that far sideline. And I would expect Coach Schaefer to maybe dial up some sort of pressure here. Rosendahl can make you pay downfield if you give him the opportunity, but I would venture to say Middle Tennessee might try to bring a little pressure and not let him just sit back there and pick you apart and essentially play seven-on-seven seven football. I have some pressure from the bottom of your screen right here from DQ Thomas, or actually that's Brooks. Rosendahl looking downfield, flag flies as Newbold makes the catch, and... Tennessee State has a first down for the time being, but we might be marching backwards. And I just don't agree with that because you drop back. They fake like they were going to blitz. Brooks dropped back. And essentially, you just had four guys rushing, no linebackers to help. And regardless, no foul that's on the play. Play. Be first I was going to say, as long as it's not a holding, Rosendahl basically had all day to throw. And you're, you're picking them apart and... I don't care if you've got Deion Sanders in your in your defensive backfield. You can only cover for so long, and after about three or four seconds, it's really hard to stay with defenders across the board. And you know he just had all day, and, and that's just too easy. So Newbold has his third catch on the evening, just three away from the Tennessee State top ten mark. And Tennessee State's certainly happy to have him back. He was banged up. Missed some time last season as another nice run up the middle. This time it's Seth Rowan, little brother of Chris Rowan. 
Middle getting his first carry tonight. Middle Tennessee, the Blue Raider defense, it kind of looks like they're playing hockey out there, just doing a line shit and line change. As four new defensive linemen come in, I wonder if they're trying to keep those guys fresh. Rosendahl under center. And it's rolling again up the middle. This time he's got room across the 50. Inside the 30, brought down at the 25-yard line. The freshman can fly. Looks like they brought in two tight ends on that play. And a lot of times, defenses will bring an extra safety down into the box when you see that to help for run support. But the problem is, again, if you break that first layer containment and get into the secondary, there's not a lot of help back there. And thankfully for the Blue Raider faithful, Somebody had the speed and the angle to get that, but what a run. Right side, Roberson cuts back, and he's brought down at the 20. Not sure why I said Chris Roll, or excuse me, Seth Rowland was a freshman. He's definitely a senior. It's our first game back, too. Just knocking off the rust a little bit. Hey, it happens. It happens. To the players, it happens with us. Probably happens to a few fans. I don't know, maybe they didn't stay hydrated. That last rush gives 102 rushing yards on the day for Tennessee State as a team, as this play is going to be blown dead. Prior to the snap, false start on the offense, number three, five yard penalty, still second down. And Chris Rowan. Jumped a little bit early, and he says, yep, yeah, my bad. Now, I want you to look at where that ball was spotted before that penalty. It was on the 21-yard line, and here's that technically your yard away from the red zone, but essentially you're back in the red zone, and all of a sudden you start shooting yourselves in the foot again. In Tennessee State, we talked about it and talked about it and talked about it all week through our preparations where we talked over the phone earlier in the week that this team had to do a better job of finishing drives with six points and not with three points via the field goal. And right now, you've got some momentum, you, things are going your way, and you hurt yourself with a penalty. You've got to force the defense to stop you, not stop yourselves. Tennessee State had 14 penalties a week ago in the Tennessee John Merritt Classic. That They've already got six here tonight for 30 yards. We've got a timeout on the field, and with 6.32 to go, the Tigers are driving. Deep into Blue Raider territory, they lead 6-3. to three. Stay with us. Into action. What would you like the power to do? Tennessee State trying to tack on more points here in the second quarter. They lead 6-3. to three. In their first game back in 21 years in Murfreesboro. 1998. The last time these two teams played. Even we were fairly young, Jake. I was a solid 10 years old. Yeah. Here comes the blitz. Rinder got held up, and there's the flag as Roberson is going to be wrangled up and dropped outside the 30. And for the Raiders, DQ Thomas. As DQ Thomas was on the stop and move the Tigers back another 10 yards. Holding on the offense, number 60. 10 yard penalty. Still second down. Lachavius Simmons. He started at least one game at every position except for center. On the offensive line, that is. Yeah, and, and you know, that's that's the kind of player that coaches love, not only because of their versatility, but the reality of it is if you're willing to move from a position that, hey, I haven't played before, I'm willing to go over here, I like playing tackle, but now I'm going to play guard or vice versa, that shows your willingness to do whatever it takes for the team. And, and coaches and players, they just respect that so much and, and they live for, for guys like that. Yeah, no Thomas Burton, it looks like, out there right now for Tennessee State. He's their most decorated offensive lineman as Roberson catches the chip down. Picks up a hand, handful on second and 20. So call it third and 13. Raiders looking for another stop here on third down. If you're Tennessee State, you know, 
it, it's it's not going to be an easy, it's not impossible, but it's going to be hard to get 13, 14 yards to pick up that first down. Obviously, if it's there, you want to get that. But I'd run something short, something easy, an easy route, just five or so yards down the field in case you can't get the first down. You can give yourselves a better shot at being in field goal range and give your kicker an easier look at it, try to extend this lead. But what you can't do is take a sack, and I think Coach Reed saw something there. Timeout, Tennessee State. That is our second timeout. Coach Reed uses his second timeout with 5.33 to go. 30-second timeout. Just a quick 30-second timeout. Alongside Alex Myers and Caitlin Runyon, I'm Jake Rose. Thank you so much for joining us tonight on what has been a beautiful September Saturday here in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. And it's been a fantastic crowd. A very, very big crowd. We were talking, this is probably the biggest crowd that we've seen here since we've been doing games the last several years. Of course, Tennessee State being just 40 miles up the road in Nashville, just a straight shot on 24. Pretty easy drive. So awesome to see all the blue in the stands. A couple of good bands here contributing as well. Both of these bands highly respected in the area and looking forward to halftime. We'll get some tunes in the background. We'll continue our coverage, obviously. But hey, let's not get ahead of ourselves. 5.33 left before that point. Big play right here for both sides, for both teams here. Let's see what they do. Again, you cannot take a sack or lose yards and knock yourself out of field position. Field Javante Moffitt, the only safety back for the Blue Raiders. Here comes the pressure. Play can chip up the middle. Rosendahl's got to get rid of it. And it's going to be an incomplete pass and another nice stop for the Blue Raiders on third down. Tyshawn Rinder got it. Getting ready to get himself a flag if he's not careful. He's slapping. He's Can slapping. I say it's getting a little chippy out there? Yeah, yeah. He's, he's getting chippy, and you don't want to do that when you've got a team on the ropes on fourth down. And let's see, they're going to bring the kicker out, and this is not going to be a uh, an easy kick for Antonio Zita. But he was four or five last week. Long of 44 made. This one's going to be 47 yards. It's four or five a week ago. And the kick is up, and it's blocked! And you called it. As flags come flying down, and we talked about the chippiness going on, a lot of pushing and shoving after the fact. Zeta actually had a... good boot on it, it looked like. as the officials try and sort out the mess. To me, it looked like that was thrown after the kick was off, which tells me it could be some sort of personal, personal foul. foul. Leaping on the defense number 20, be a 15-yard penalty, and an automatic first down. And that's going to be an automatic first down wow. for the Tigers. A leaping penalty. Which... So, yeah, you cannot jump over the center. And let's see if that happens. Yeah, yep. The block came from the side. Yeah. It looked like it was Justin Brown that got the hand on it. I was going to say the, the but Brett Shepard was definitely over the top. The sad part is if you're Middle Tennessee, it wasn't even like that guy made the block. He had zero impact on the play. You didn't need to do that. And instead, Tennessee State's awarded a first down, and they've got it inside the red zone. They're 0 of 1 from inside the red zone today. Let's see if they can up those percentages and make tennis, Middle Tennessee pay for that really just – Boneheaded mistake. So it's first and 10 from the 14 yard line, and Rosendahl will get another crack at it. A lot of coaches want to go for the end zone right here after a mistake like that. Sometimes the defense is kind of hanging their heads. Another low snap, and Roberson is popped in the backfield, won't go down. And the Blue Raider that made initial contact is down. Good shape for the defensive coordinator. Or the Blue Raiders had that one dialed up just right. And that's Tyson Rinder. That is down on the play. And with 5.07, we're going to take a break while Rinder gets checked out. Tennessee State with a second chance deep in Blue Raider territory. Stay with us. Here's a second look at the hit on Roberson by Tyson Rinder. Got the initial pop and then just stayed down after the play. 
Rinder had a big game last weekend, actually a career high in tackles. He had seven, including a forced fumble and a fumble recovery. So that's a big loss for the Blue Raiders. We'll try and find out what's going on with Tyshin. Second and 14 for Tennessee State, Rosendahl. And Roberson in the backfield. Here comes Middle Tennessee's defense. Roberson finds a seam inside the 15 to the 11. He's a shifty, quick runner. Yeah, he's gotten stopped a couple times, but if he can get two or three yards downfield, basically if you can break containment of that defensive line, he is hard to bring down for these Middle Tennessee linebackers, and he's so quick. Straight, he's got straight line speed, as a lot of guys yeah. like to say. If he gets going north and south, it's a scary thing for defenses. Seth Rowland is checked in for third and eight for the Tigers. Middle Tennessee trying to get another stop on third down. Watch Rowland across the middle. There's a lot of space. He's on the strong side of the field. Rosendahl looking left, looking for the end zone, and picked off by Reed Blankenship. His second pick tonight. Just plays center field right here. Watch him just go up, leap up for it. One preseason all-conference USA for nothing. Two picks on the night, as you mentioned. And that one likely saved at least three right there. And the Blue Raiders, now, what are, are you going to take advantage of the opportunities that your defense has given you a couple times now? So far, you haven't been able to punch it in the end zone. Four minutes and 16 seconds, not a ton of time. But for a coach stock still driven offense, they don't need four minutes most of the time. So let's see if they can respond right here. O'Hara steps up, throwing deep down the middle. He's got a man wide open. Touchdown. DJ England Chisholm. And a beautiful dime from Asher O'Hara. Watch that beautiful pocket, lots of protection. Wide open, he, he throws it to the receiver in stride. He doesn't have to wait on it, and because of that, he's able to run it in for six. A couple drives ago, Tennessee State off a turnover. I said, what do they need to do, take a shot instead? They handed it off, lost their momentum. That time, off a turnover, Coach Stocksville says, I'm going to take a shot, and boy, did it pay off. Cruz Holt kick is good, and 80 yards on the first play on the drive, and Middle Tennessee has a four-point lead with 4.05 to go. Crossing the finish line like Usain Bolt. First career touchdown for DJ England Chisholm. Got wheels like that. I venture to say he'll have a few more left in his Blue Raider career. What a throw. But I said, you know, they don't get a lot of the credit, but the offensive line had great protection for Asher O'Hara. He was able to step in and just launch that ball perfectly in stride. He said they had 14, 4 minutes and 16 seconds to work with to try to get points on the board. And, Jake, they took exactly 9 seconds to get 6 points. Rome will be back to receive the kick. Well, he actually usually is, but Jake Rowland is not out there. I think they're going to give him a breather. Well, let's see if Middle Tennessee tries to take advantage and kick it to one of those guys, or if Bruce Holt just tries to pin him deep through the end zone. Darren Johnson and Sean Davis are deep. Davis will take it on the hop inside the 10, looking for room. Never really hit the gas, and he's wrapped up at the 10-yard line. Patterson on the stop for Middle Tennessee, and not a big fan of this cliche, but I'm going to use it anyway. You can feel the momentum shifting I, towards Middle Tennessee. Obviously, an 80-yard bomb helps, but even with all the defensive stops, I was just getting ready to especially say, it, in your own zone. Yeah, it, it's weird that you said that because I was just getting ready to say that you can almost feel it. You know, you talk about feeling the electricity. You can almost feel the momentum shift because earlier. As we look at the field, as you look at your screen towards the right side of the field where the Tennessee State section is, in the, where their band is, you were hearing a lot of noise. The rest of the stadium was kind of quiet. It's totally shifted. It's gotten louder, more energetic. And like you said, it's cliche, but you can kind of feel the atmosphere changing. Great, great back in the game for Middle Tennessee at that left corner spot as Seth Rowland will take it up the middle. 
Tennessee State's found something on these quick hitters right behind the center in between the two guards. A lot of times, I mean, it's kind of been feast or famine. Either they're getting stopped in the backfield or they're able to catch, you know, pick up seven, eight, nine yards. Look at this tight set again. Last time they ran the ball out of this and they got a big jump. Roland again up the middle, crosses the 20, reaching for the pile or the sticks. And he will have enough for a first down. The 11th first down for Tennessee State tonight. That's a crazy thing to think about. 11 first downs and only six points to show for it. We talked about last week their struggles to finish drives, and it's kind of been, unfortunately, for them more of the same so far this week. But they've got a chance to kind of redeem themselves. Exactly three minutes to go here in the first half. Three wide near sideline. It's rolling. And he'll be knocked out about the 27-yard line. Call a pickup of about five. Blankenship in on the stop again. He's all over the place tonight. Yeah, and he's you know, get used to that. If you haven't seen Middle Tennessee play, get used to hearing number 12's name, Reed Blankenship. That guy flies all over the field. He's returned punts for him. Returned a lot of interceptions for him, and he's the type of guy that even though he plays defensive back, if he gets the ball in his hands, he's extremely lethal. He can take it back. Rolling near sideline. And he's going to be punished by Khalil Brooks. The first time we've called his name tonight. Active team leader in tackles for a loss and sacks. Just four tackles last week against Michigan. But it's good enough for a first down. First and ten for the Tigers. Kind of different to watch a, a pro-style offense play in this building. Seen Rosendahl go under center several times. A lot of single back formations. Here comes the blitz. Picked up near sideline and another nice catch. That's Steven Newbold again. Every catch that he has made has been with his hands very far away from his body. Yeah, very impressive. And, and that's the way you teach him. You go out and grab the ball, be the aggressor as a receiver. And boy, that was all about timing from the drop back of Rosendahl. If you throw that late, that could be picked off on a comeback route to the outside like that. If you don't have the arm strength to get it there, it could be picked off. And boy, beautiful pass, beautiful catch, just how you drew it up. Rosendahl looking for Rowland across the middle, and he's got the catch. And good enough for another Tennessee State first down. They're waving on the chain gang, and time's ticking away, though, Jake. A minute and 44 seconds to go. Once the ball is spotted, they'll go ahead and start the clock back up. Offense is not quite as explosive usually as Middle Tennessee's is, so you would think that you know you're going to need a little bit more time to get down the field. You're going to have to start stretching the field at some point with only one timeout remaining. Under a minute 30 to go in the first half, four wide for Rosendahl. Looking to throw, steps up, and almost intercepted. Probably should have been picked off. Justin Brown got his mitts on it. Couldn't haul it in, and it's going to be second and ten. Yeah, that's a couple of them just off the top of my head that I can think of passes that the Middle Tennessee defender has had in their hands but not been able to pick off maybe even three now that I'm thinking. I think D.Q. Thomas had a couple earlier, and Rosendahl's got to be a little more careful than that. He didn't really step into that one. He kind of was half on the run, half not, and kind of flipped it out there. And when you're in double coverage, thrown across the field, that's just not very smart. A minute 16 now on second and 10. Rosendahl looking over the middle and almost another interception. As it looked like a Tiger offensive lineman got a handful of somebody's jersey down there, no flag. Watch, somebody comes through the middle real, really quick there and kind of disrupts what Rosendahl was trying to look for down the field. And instead of kind of scampering out to his left, creating a little bit more time and even being able to throw it away, he panics and just flicks it across the middle. And that's just so dangerous. Quarterback coaches will not like you to do that. Big third down here. If Middle Tennessee can get a stop with two timeouts left, in theory, they could try to go be aggressive. Rosendahl is visibly hobbling, just gets the throw off. 
And Middle Tennessee's defense is there to wrap him up in the backfield. And it's going to be fourth down as Rosendahl gingerly heads towards the sideline. And with 58 seconds timeout. left, Middle Tennessee, Middle Tennessee will take a timeout. They have one remaining. And they're going to try and extend the lead with under a minute here in the first half. So Middle Tennessee's defense has There's really showed up timeout. here in the second quarter. And remember, as Tennessee State brings their punt unit out, a couple things to keep in mind. A, the punts that they've gotten off have not been very far. They've been high wobblers, but they haven't gotten a lot of distance on them. You'd like to pin Middle Tennessee State back deep, sort of to discourage them from trying to be aggressive and get points. The other thing, and almost more importantly to keep in mind, is I said it earlier, Middle Tennessee looks like they're on track to block a punt at some point tonight. And if you're TSU and punter Caleb Mosley, you've got to be very careful here to get this thing off quickly because it looks like Middle Tennessee is going to again bring pressure. Middle Tennessee has already blocked two field goals tonight. One was called back. Here comes the pressure. Mosley just got it away. Ty Lee is going to let this one bounce. A beautiful punt from Mosley inside the 10. It's going to be fielded at about the five-yard line by Tennessee State. So Asher O'Hara is going to have to go about 95 yards in 47 seconds. And get some points on the board. It's exactly what you would have drawn up is get them inside the five. They're actually going to mark it at the six. But instead of, you know, if you punt that through the end zone and, and O'Hara's got a little room to work, maybe they go for it. Maybe they try to be aggressive. And they still may. But I think it really kind of discourages an offense from trying to be aggressive when you look at it situation. 47 seconds, only one timeout, and now you're backed up inside your own 10-yard line. You don't want to make a mistake. Wouldn't be surprised to see Middle Tennessee try a run if it breaks. Try to be aggressive, but if it, you know, if, if they're able to stop this play right here for just a couple of yards, I wouldn't be surprised to let them just try to run the clock out. Anderson in the backfield for Middle Tennessee. Play action. O'Hara going to go down the middle again. Looking for England Chisholm. And correct me if I'm wrong, was that not the same play yeah, that Middle right. Tennessee scored on? If it wasn't the same play, at the least, it was the same exact route from Chisholm. Just a, just a kind of a skinny post route. Beats the corner and the safety by the time he realizes that it's too late. And O'Hara hit him in stride the first time. And that time, he was just a couple of yards away from hitting him in stride again. And if, if that's caught, it, you could be looking at six again. Second and ten from the five. O'Hara's going to take it up the middle himself. And he's going to leap at the 20. Dangerous move. The clock stops now. you got to remember that 32 seconds. It won't start until the ball is spotted. That's Rick, a, that's Rick a still is saying, don't you ever <laughs> do that again. That is a dangerous play right there. Leaped right over the top of the defender. O'Hara going near sideline. Another first down. That's going to be C.J. Windham. You're going to have to attack deep here before long because you do have one timeout left, but you're still 30 or so yards away from being in field goal in field goal range. And if you're TSU on defense, you got to know that even if you bring pressure, your defensive backs cannot get beat deep. O'Hara steps up. Here comes the pressure. Gets loose. He's got enough for the first down, heading towards the sideline, and he got it. I believe they call that escape ability. And time has run out, according to that is the now, I don't know. the first half. Middle Tennessee sideline disagrees. They're asking for one more second. Rick Stock's still going to talk it over with the officials. But both teams are heading for their locker rooms. That seemed like a quick clock there at the end, especially for the home team. But uh, the officials said the clock the run out. And now middle, was under no, the now middle Tennessee staff, was under they're bringing it back out. They're going to take a look at this. Yeah, we're going to get a booth review on this. Because it looked like, at least from our angle up here, I was trying to watch both the clock on our monitor and the clock here in the stadium, and it was hard to tell. Game clock operator, please put one second on the and game it's going to be one second. 
one second. Be first so down. Middle Tennessee will get one more crack at it from about the 50-yard line. First and, first A heads-up play the from Asher O'Hara, who, as you mentioned, last week led Middle Tennessee in rushing with 32 rushing yards. And a lot of that was him scrambling. And you can see that as part of his arsenal. So one second left. And you're going to get to see his arm strength right here. Where's England Chisholm at? Well, if you're if you're Tennessee State in the defensive backfield, you see they got four guys deep, and it looks like they've got a wide receiver back there. And that's Malik Abdul Haq. And a lot of times those guys that aren't used to being back there, Jake, will try to catch it and it ends up being a tip. It's going to be a screen pass to Mobley on the near sideline, and he's going to pick up a first down, but it doesn't really matter as the clock winds down. Interesting play call. So Middle Tennessee after the first half has a 10 to 6 lead over their longtime rival, Tennessee State. Interesting first half, and we will send it down to Caitlin, who's with Rick Stockstill. Thanks, Jake. Coach Stockstill, defense has been a big factor in this game, but your special teams has been the big story. So tell me about the positives from them. Well, uh, you know, we blocked the extra point there early, and uh, so we did a nice job. We're doing a nice job covering on kickoffs. You know, the one touchdown we gave up, we busted, we, we went inside when we should have stayed outside leverage. You know, our defense is, is done okay. You know, we're giving up some runs there. And then offensively, we couldn't play any worse than what we did the first quarter. We just uh, shot ourselves in the foot with a turnover, missed some balls, uh, had a couple penalties. So we played a little bit better the second quarter, but not a whole lot. We got to improve a lot this second half. All right, thanks, Coach. Thank you, appreciate it. Back to you, Jake. Thank you, Thank you Coach. Thank you, Caitlin. And we are at halftime. Middle Tennessee comes from behind in the first half. And they lead 10-6. We'll be back with halftime stats and highlights right after this. Halftime here at Middle Tennessee as the Tennessee State Band has taken the field. And they are putting on a show here at Floyd Stadium. Middle Tennessee, however, has a four-point lead over the Tigers 10 to 6 and now it's the way the first half started It was a little sloppy in the first quarter We saw some things that we don't normally see on a football field But Tennessee, excuse me, Middle Tennessee able to respond with an 80-yard touchdown pass Yeah, we talked about both of these teams for Middle Tennessee in pregame What we talked about was having consistent play especially offensively for all four quarters and quite frankly They weren't able to do that early on but later on as the game as the game started to flow a little bit more We got later into the first half you saw things start to click you saw the deep ball uh, O'Hara connected with a couple of different guys in the deep ball uh, the running game still struggling to, to much of an extent but overall the offense looked better there in the second quarter they've got to come out with more of a fire underneath them I think in the third quarter because TSU really they're looking themselves in the mirror Jake and saying we should be ahead right now absolutely that fourth down interception on a fake punt play thrown by the wide receiver Chris Rowan picked off in the end zone by Reed Blankenship. That should have been at least a field goal. Negate that. And then you have an interception in the red zone uh, on a later drive in the second quarter. And we're gonna take a look at our first half stats there. See Tennessee State doing a great job of being able to run the ball. And they've actually been running right through this middle Tennessee defense. Yeah, that's the main stat that pops out there is third down percentage first off, 45% to 25%. But 120 rush yards just to 70 for Middle Tennessee. Now, Middle Tennessee with 70 in the first half. I'd say Coach Stocksville, he's not upset about that because that's still on track for a lot better than they did at Michigan last week. However, the time of possession, to me, that's the ultimate thing. 21 minutes for Tennessee State, just eight and a half for Middle Tennessee. All right, more from halftime coming up. Middle Tennessee leads. Beer Garden. I'm here with President Sydney McPhee. Dr. McPhee, schools all across the state are trying to implement new ways to get students involved on campus, and this is one of the ways that MTSU has done this. Can you tell me a little bit about the fermentation department and their impact on getting students more involved? Yes, this is uh, really a classic example of a business uh, university partnership. Uh, we have developed a fermentation degree program, and we've partnered with Steel Barrel Brewery. They've actually built a lab in their brewery for our students to be able to learn how to certainly uh, perfect their, their craft, so to speak. 
But I also want to know that fermentation involves, uh, you know, cheese, uh, yogurt. Uh, it's it's a science-based degree, and as you can see, each grain we will be having a special beer that was being um, crafted for MTSU in the beer garden, and I think it so far it looks like it's a great hit. Perfect. And speaking of student involvement, President McPhee, the Blue Zoo is back in action. Last time they were a relevant organization was back in 2016 in the shocking March Madness upset over Michigan State. It's back now under Kobe Herman. Tell me a little bit about the Blue Zoo and their impact on campus as well. It's another example of uh, student spirit. And I need to give uh, Kobe a, a great um, shout out for taking that initiative. Uh, there was a great sending off with respect to getting this going. I think you will see much more involvement uh, with MTSU students as a result of the reinstituting the Blue Zoo. All right, thank you so much. Right. Back to you, Jake. Thank you, Caitlin, and thank you, Dr. McPhee. And all I can say is I certainly wish they had that major here when I was here. We'll be back in a second. Moments away from second half action here at Floyd Stadium, but before we get the second half started, let's send it down to Caitlin Runyon, who caught up with Tennessee State head coach Rod Reed. Thanks, guys. I just talked to Coach Reed and brought up how MTSU going into this game was the 25 and a half point favorite. However, he said that is all on paper. He said they are just as much in this game as, the, as MTSU is, and he believes that if their offense can pick up the momentum a little bit, that they have just as much a chance of winning. Back to you. Thank you, Caitlin. And just kind of looking over the first half stats here, seven penalties for Tennessee State. 0 for 2 in the red zone. They've been 5 of 11 on third down, and they've had the ball for more than 13 minutes compared to Middle Tennessee. Those penalties have been absolutely drive killers for them. Yeah, they have, and, and a lot of times it's not just the penalties, it's the timing of the penalties that's really taken a lot of the momentum. Like, you know, for instance, you think of a, a drive killer being just on a third or fourth down when you get the penalty. Not necessarily. They had a first and 10 inside the 20, I can think of, earlier late in the second quarter when they get the first down and then immediately get penalized. And even though, yeah, it's still first down, you're still taking yourself out of the position. You're kind of taking the momentum away. You know, your offensive coordinator's got a game plan when he gets in that situation. Now all of a sudden he's got to rethink what, he's, what his strategy is going into that. And so it's just, it's not just the penalties, it's the timing of the penalties. You can't shoot yourself in the foot, but the good news is for Tennessee State, they've got two whole quarters to make up for that. England Chisholm will take a knee in the end zone and Middle Tennessee will take over at the 25 yard line and England Chisholm with the big play for Middle Tennessee the 80 yard strike from Asher O'Hara to give the Raiders the lead in the second quarter of course Tennessee State struck first in the first quarter on a 96 yard pass pass and catch really with Chris Rowland on a screen pass. And as Coach Rick Stock still talked about it in the halftime interview with Caitlin, that was just busted coverage. But the Middle Tennessee defense has really locked down since then. O'Hara looking for Ty Lee across the middle. He's got him. Ty Lee able to spin out a one and falling out of bounds close to a first down. And good enough for a first down. It's the one thing, Middle Tennessee, they're shorter receivers. They've got some receivers with some length and size, but a couple of their shorter ones in Dobson and Ty Lee, if you get the ball into their hands, they're just really, really tough to bring down. And though they're, they're small, they're quick, they're shifty, and boy, Ty Lee shows you just a great example right there. Eight different receivers tonight for O'Hara. He had 14 different guys catch passes from him against Michigan last week, and there's one of them, Zach Dobson down the sideline. He can fly. The sophomore finally shoved out of bounds by Ronnie Killings, and Zach Dobson can flip a field in a snap. And what did I just tell you? I referenced one of their quote-unquote little guys who can really make plays with the ball in his hands when Ty Lee, next thing you know, Zach Dobson's back in the ball game, and they go right back to him, and, and you see the speed and acceleration of those two guys on back-to-back -back plays, how dangerous they are. And just like that, Middle Tennessee on this first drive of the third quarter, 
knocking on the door. Second catch for Dobson tonight, and it's going to be an end around, cutting it back upfield. Is Jacarius, excuse me, William Wilcox. Yep. Yusuf Ali, excuse me. And there's a player. Hard to see some of these numbers from up here. Yeah, the, there's a player shaking up, and we'll see who that is just in a moment. But I'll say this on Ali, although he only gained about a half a yard, maybe a yard, I love that play from him because instead of stringing out and going backwards like a lot of guys were to try to make a play, he said, hey, I'll make the best of a tough situation, just stick my nose in there and, and get what I can. And coaches like that. That's Reuben Garnett, the senior from Georgia shaking up on the play. We are going to take a timeout with 13.47 to go here in the second half. Middle Tennessee up 10-6 to 6 on the visiting Tigers of Tennessee State. Stay with us. Reuben Garnett, the senior from Hepzibah, Georgia, was the injured Raider on the play. And here on the replay, you're going to see him get rolled up on at the end of that last play. He was able to walk off the field with help. He made it to the injury tent. We are told it is a left leg injury. He missed 12 games last year. He was injured with an Achilles injury against Georgia in 2018. So hopefully we'll see him back on the field tonight. Yeah, you just you hate to see that and hope and pray for the best and hope especially a guy who's dealt with injury issues before you just want want these guys to get a chance to, to do what they love doing five wide though for Middle Tennessee right here is all of a sudden it's third down and Middle Tennessee after a play like that when your brothers goes down you got to try to get some momentum back because this crowd has gone silent third down empty backfield for O'Hara four man rush for the Tigers O'Hara flushed out of the pocket rolling right being chased looking for the end zone His first touchdown reception on the season, number 22 for his career, and Asher O'Hara. With the shot put touchdown pass on the run, going towards the sideline, off one fit, off one foot, and my goodness, if he had pockets, I tell you, O'Hara just dropped some loose change because he just dropped an absolute dime over the outstretched arms of a defender. And Jake, I thought it was going to be picked off for just a second, and what a beautiful throw! Great I think touch. Neiman Armstrong, the cornerback for the. Tigers thought that that was going to be his first career interception. But just like last weekend against Michigan, perfect little alley-oop for six for O'Hara. We're going to get another look at it right here. Just, you know, sometimes you don't have to have the strongest arm or the most zip on a ball. Sometimes it's about touch. And just watch this. He just floats it right over the top of one defender. And, man, if that, if that ball is one more foot out of bounds or anything like that, it's just not a catchable ball. And, boy. Never gave up on that play, and credit to Whiteout as well for never giving up and trying to fight till the end of that play. Boy, that's just, that's, it, it may not look like it because it's not a very long throw, but I'm telling you, that's an incredibly tough throw and, and a really, really a, a great throw as far as how accurate it was on the run. Scoring drive of five plays, 75 yards, two minutes, 13 seconds, and with that touchdown reception, Ty Lee has 64 yards receiving tonight, and that puts him over the 3,000 mark for all-purpose yards for his career. He is actually the active NCAA leader in receptions. He came into this game tonight with 217. Kick return down the near sideline by Deron Johnson. And Tennessee State will try to respond. 
after Middle, Ten Middle Tennessee has taken an 11 point lead 17 to 6. You mentioned a minute ago Ty Lee how great he is as far as this program is concerned. And what he's done historically he's now caught a pass since he's caught several tonight. He's now caught a pass in 42 straight games. The school record for Middle Tennessee is 43. So unless something crazy happens he will have yet another record to his name here in just a couple of ball games. He'll tie it if he does it next week. In the round, it's going to be Chris Rowan. He's going to be dragged down behind the line of scrimmage. Khalil Brooks as Michael Hughes is the starting quarterback in the second half for the Tigers. We saw Cameron Rosendahl limp off the field a couple of times earlier in the first half. We also saw the offense sputter a lot after that first and only touchdown by the Tigers in the first quarter. So Hughes sees his first game action of 2019. As Roberson around the left side, going to lower his shoulder again near a first down. And LaKendrick Roberson's impressive night continues. And correct me if I'm wrong, Jake, but we were on the same page earlier on the same wavelength when we talked about the feeling in the air, right? There was some momentum for Middle Tennessee, and I don't know if you're feeling it or not, but I'm feeling here that Tennessee State, A, they need to score, but if they can't score, they need to at least hold the ball for a couple minutes, move the ball a little bit, because it almost gets the you almost get the feeling with this crowd, this home crowd on their side, that if Middle Tennessee can get a quick three and out right here, they could be primed and ready to score yet again. Single back formation, Roberson, another first down. That's just another big play, big carry for Roberson. He's had a lot of success off that left guard, and uh, like I said, you, you just kind of got the feeling if they got a quick stop and had to punt deep in their own territory again, that, you know, it, it would, could be a scary situation for that defense having to face O'Hara and that offense that was really starting to get things rolling. Now you get a first down, you can kind of Take a deep breath as an offense here and try to get things going on back on your side. Trips to the top of your screen for Hughes. He's going to throw that way to Rowan. Rowan sneaks around one defender and scoots out of bounds just shy of the 50-yard line. Pick up of about eight. They've got the right idea. If, if you're wanting to get back in this ball game and you're wanting to get some points on the board, there's a couple of guys I'd target for Tennessee State, and it'd be Rowan. Uh, he, he would be my option A. And then also uh, a couple of these backs that they've gotten involved throughout the ball game. But Roland already targeted a couple times on this drive, and I think that's the right route. Get him the ball, get him chances. The more touches he gets, the better chance you have to score. Hughes is going to take it himself on the option play. Slides and gets popped at the 50. That's, and, that's, yeah, that's close. awfully close. Yeah, absolutely. Desmond Anderson, the... Former running back and wide receiver now making the switch to cornerback. Putting a lick on Hughes, and that's really close. It was, but on second look right there, I think that Anderson was already kind of starting his down, you know, down motion as before Hughes started to started his slide. So I think that's probably why you didn't see a call. Third and short here. They've really gone off that left guard on third and shorts before. Let's see what they do here. Rolling in the backfield. Middle Tennessee gets the push up front. And Seth Rowan is denied by the front seven of Middle Tennessee. Good push. And the offense for the Tigers is going to stay on the field for the time being. I think this is the exact right move. Um, you know, are you on your side of the field technically by one yard? Uh, but I, I think I think on, on the road in an environment that's getting louder and louder by the play. I don't necessarily agree with going out of the shotgun, but they're trying to draw them off sides. I wonder if they may switch the play here. Uh, I just like going back off that left side like you've had so much success. One on the game clock, they snap it. Hughes is going to keep it, take it himself. He's going to be close. Based off the initial spot, he's got it. It wasn't by much, though. Maybe a half a link of a football. Yeah, Hughes is built like a running back, 6'2", 230, or more like a linebacker, I should say. But he's a senior from right up the road in Nashville from Hillsborough High School, which is literally three blocks away from my house. Started four games last season. 
was hurt in the last game of the year as handoff up the middle going nowhere to Roberson. Was hurt before the last game of the year and Rosendahl took over and beat out Hughes during fall camp for the starting job, but Hughes is more than capable. 24 career touchdowns in his time at Tennessee State. Actually led the Ohio Valley Conference in passing efficiency back in 2017 when he started the final six games for the Tigers. Yeah, this is no ordinary backup that, you know, this is his first action in a big moment. Hughes is a, a, like capable is a great word. He's very capable of leading this team back. Play action. Looking deep downfield. Looking for Newbold. Can't come in with it. Newbold looking for a flag, but Desmond Anderson says, hey, man, I've played wide receiver before, too. But we also have a flag down in the backfield as well. Holding on the offense, number 80. 10-yard penalty. Still second down. So that will be the eighth penalty called against the Tigers. I believe that's the first of the second half, though, correct? Yes. Which, if you look at the time on the clock, you know, you're you know, no penalty is a good penalty per se, but, you know, it's you're on pace for a little bit better in the, in the second half. But again, right when you start to get some momentum with your offense just across into enemy territory on their side of the 50, you're moved right back to your 40. Second and 20. Hughes play action. Here comes the pressure. He finds Rowan. Rowan slips out of a few tackles. Breaks it up the middle. Rowan hitting the juice. Inside the 20. 10, 5, touchdown. Chris Rowan, have yourself a night. You don't think this game means something to Chris Rowland, do you? Watch this on the replay. One defender, two, three, four dives at him, five. And guess what? Anderson says, I'll be the sixth. No, thank you. Why not a seven? Seven defenders with a legitimate shot or attempt to tackle Chris Rowland on that play. And not a one could get him down. And he's the holder. So don't, don't forget that. A two-point conversion could make this a field goal game. Kick is up, and it is good. A nine-play, 76-yard drive, five and a half minutes, 60 yards for Chris Rowan. And the Tigers are right. Chris Rowan has two touchdowns tonight one for 96 yards this one is a 60 yard catch and run and my man is a game changer second straight week with at least 170 yards receiving and two touchdowns tonight he was the mvp of the john merritt classic last week and so far he's the mvp tonight there's no doubt about it especially for tsu and you know jake this is this is just like a prime example of a quarterback's favorite type of receiver because it looks like Hughes just threw a 60-yard touchdown if somebody's just reading the stat book. He only threw it about four yards downfield, but Roland did the rest. And Middle Tennessee after that touchback will start at the 25. But, you know, you talked about, we talked about at the beginning of that drive, they needed to move the ball, but they really needed to get points talking about Tennessee State because you felt like if they weren't able to get anything going on that drive, and Middle Tennessee could go, come back and score quickly. That might could be just about the ball game. Well, they don't. Instead, they take a long drive down the field. They matriculate, as Hank Stram used to say. <laughs> they matriculated the ball all the way down the field. And now they're, it's a one-possession game. I wonder if the decision not to go for two points could come back to haunt them, though, because that could have made it a field goal game. Instead, it's a four-point game. O'Hara is going to keep it himself. He's got room up the middle. And he leaps again just a little bit. And he's knocked down at the 40-yard line. Not quite the leap we had late in the second quarter, but like you alluded to earlier, I don't know that going back on film, Coach Stock still is going to be too happy with his quarterback leaping into the air more than he really has to, especially, you know, 40, 50 yards away from the end zone. Anderson around the left side, nowhere to go, swallowed up by the Tigers' defense. The good news is, 
If you're a Tennessee State fan, your defense should be relatively rested. I mean, they, they Middle Tennessee had the ball for single-digit minutes. I think it was eight minutes and 20-something yeah. seconds in the first half. The second half, your team just came off a very long drive. I, your defense should have some spunk about them. They just got to come up and make a play. Someone's got to step up. O'Hara looking to throw. And he's got a man at the 50-yard line. It's England Chisholm. He breaks a couple of tackles. He's at the 40. He's got room. A flag flies. This one is going to be coming back. And England Chisholm knows it's coming back as we have all sorts of laundry all over the carpet. And there's one, there's two at the same spot right at the 32-yard line. I think that's going to be either holding or blocking in the back. But there's potentially even a more important penalty back in the backfield, which leads me to believe it could be holding. And if that's the case, it won't just negate the yards after catch. It will negate the whole play. I'll tell you what, this game is loaded with dynamic playmaking skill players. That was a little redundant, I suppose. Well, it's it's true, though, and... and that's the one there are thing. Fouls these on both teams. Unsportsmanlike conduct on the defense number five. That is his first unsportsmanlike foul. Holding on the offense number 24. Those fouls offset. Repeat second down. So the unsportsmanlike goes against Manny Olinga. The backup defensive end. Yeah, that's just that's just a play that can't happen. You get a break on the road. In a game that, you know, in a game that you're trailing in, and you get a break on a penalty downfield, which in a play that should have been a touchdown, right? And you get a break, and turns out there's a penalty, and then one of your guys goes and makes a, a just a mental error, a, a play that you just can't have. It's just not a winning play if you're trying to come back from behind. The hold called on Zach Dobson. Play action. O'Hare trying to step up. He leads one tackler, now three tacklers. And look at him go inside the 50, finally. Brought down inside TSU territory at about the 45-yard line. And again, O'Hara, the leading rusher. A lot of Conference USA linebackers watching this tape over the next few weeks going, hey, I'm going to get a shot at O'Hara because he has not been too fond of sliding. Near sideline, Jock Bruce is going to be brought down. Akai Brown on the tackle near the near sideline. Jock Bruce is a he's got a, a cool story. A lot of people know he was headed to the University of Tennessee, decided kind of last minute to come to Middle Tennessee, and it's didn't get playing time immediately, but he is starting to come into his own here over the start of this season in particular. And I think he's just another one in the in the string of those Dobson, Ty Lee type players that you can just get him the ball. He's a little bit bigger than both of those guys played running back in high school. Play action to Mobley. O'Hara dancing, looking for help, an absolute huge block. And O'Hara leaping again. And Will Gilchrist. With a punishing block. Yeah, I don't think the defender ever even saw no. him coming. And that's good news and awesome in the crowd, but as a defender, that is that is a scary moment. Yeah, that's Makai Brown shaking up on the play. Fancy play by O'Hara stretching the ball. He didn't quite get the first down, but he was probably just less than a yard away from getting that. And I didn't realize he was that close, but players shaking up for Tennessee State. We've had a couple of these guys for each team now get shaken up, and, and you hate to see it. Unfortunately, it's part of the game, and hopefully Makai Brown will be able to shake this one off with relative ease. Brown, the senior from Columbus, Georgia. Able to walk off under his own power. Always good to see. Mentioned earlier, he's the transfer from Alabama. Spent a few seasons playing for Nick Saban in Tuscaloosa. Has found a home here in Nashville playing for Rod Reed for the last couple of seasons. And it's going to be third and one.
Dalton Franz in the lead block for Middle Tennessee. O'Hara's going to keep it, slips one tackle, and he's going to have a first down, still leaping. Finally brought down at the 30-yard line. He did it on the last play as well when he stretched down. And, you know, I don't, I don't want to just be beating a dead horse here, but he has got to be careful because not only when you jump are you in the air, you're exposing more of your body than is normally exposed. And, you know, as a quarterback, O'Hara is not, you know, he's not a rail, but he's not exactly, you know, the biggest guy out there. And eventually those shots will start to, to take a toll on you. And I'm sure he'll be sore in the morning, but so far, it's worked out well for him. Play action to Anderson looking for the end zone. Has a receiver open. Did he catch it? Yes, he did. Touchdown. Jaron Pierce, his second on the season. And another great throw from Asher O'Hara. Pierce did a good job to stay with it. He bobbled it as he was heading out of bounds. Yeah, if this was the NFL, I don't know if it's a touchdown, but he gets that last left foot right there. A little toe tapping from Pierce. The transfer from the College of the Canyons has given Middle Tennessee a 10-point lead with 3.48 to go. And Cruz Holtz will make it an 11-point lead, 24-13 on the seven play 75 yard drive capped off by a third are you ready with his second touchdown catch as a blue raider and he has given middle tennessee a 24 to 13 lead here with 348 to go in the third alongside alex myers and caitlin running i'm jake rose thank you so much for joining us tonight here in murfreesboro the home opener for the blue raiders as Cruz Holt, I don't think he meant to do that. Now their their strategy, which you can see, is what they've done is unlike Middle Tennessee, who's been fair catching kick and, out of bounds, and uh, most of their kick kicking team number 18, ball be placed at the 35 yard line, first down. And set, starting at the 25 yard line, Middle Tennessee has intentionally been almost squibbing it, kicking it short, and that's why Tennessee State's had the unfortunate uh, event of having to start. Most of their drives, a lot of them here in the second half, inside their own 15, 20 yard line. So they were trying to do that again. But unfortunately, when you squib, a lot of times you don't know how it's going to bounce. Well, Jake, that one didn't even get a chance to bounce before it was already out of bounds. So yeah, that just knuckled out of bounds. Yeah, mistake there by Cruz Holt. But um, the law of averages, if you get them pinned back inside the 15 two or three times in a row before that happens, I'm sure Coach Dock still is not too upset about that. Michael Hughes back out for his second series of work here in the second half. Play action rolling out, looking for that far sideline. It's going to be caught, but not a lot doing. As Miles Cabot has his first catch tonight. A lot of room over here to the right side on this particular play. Going back to Rowan, far sideline, close to the sticks. And anytime he's touched the ball tonight, got to pay attention, he's quick. Yeah, you got you off. That's why I was mentioning before the snap about the ball being on the left side. I wondered if they might bring him in motion, almost give him a handoff or a little pitch or something to get him in, into an area where he's got a lot of space. That time they got it to him, he had a couple blockers. There was just not really a ton of room to work with. With that last reception, he has now surpassed his career high of 179 yards from last season against Austin P. He now has 182. Third down run for Roberson, and he's going to be stuffed. Cody Smith, the middle linebacker, the first to make contact. And a big stand by the Blue Raider defense. Yeah, beautiful job right there. Textbook lineback play from Smith. As he just shot the gap, there's not a lot of space, but as soon as he sees a sliver of light, he just shoots the gap. And goes gets into the backfield, makes a tackle before Tigers had really any chance to cut the ball back upfield. So Mosley heading back out onto the field for his fourth punt. Oh. 
Raiders drop back as Reed Blankenship will call for a fair catch at about the 14-yard line. And that's where Middle Tennessee will take over their third drive here in the second half. You got the lead stretched out to 11 right now. If you were able to score a touchdown, you know, you could make it an 18-point game, or if you went for two, you could make it, in theory, to where, you know, it'd be a four-possession game. I don't know that they would do that, but obviously that's a long way from here, approximately 85 yards away from the end zone. You just want to give yourself some space right now. O'Hara looking. Now going to tuck it. Flags fly in the backfield, and O'Hara will scamper out of bounds just shy of the 35-yard line, but I think this one's going to be coming back. O'Hara, I think you're right. I think it's coming back, but O'Hara, even as he went out of bounds, he kind of yeah. hopped out of bounds oh, right there. I don't know. When the offense number 66. It's almost like a Sammy Sosa hop. After this, the goal. Still first down. Speaking of 1998. Yeah, there's the hold there as... Looked like Dante Ferguson of Tennessee State got all sorts of tangled up. So first and 18, play action. O'Hara dancing, O'Hara in trouble. Brought down just in front of the goal line. Rashawn Epting, the first time that we've called his name tonight, the junior, the transfer from New Mexico. In his first season at Tennessee State, has his first career stack. You can see it coming at first. Looks like he's going to have a little bit of time, and then all of a sudden it just collapsed. And three Tigers in the area at once. Lucky he didn't fall backwards. There would have been a safety. And boy, Middle Tennessee's got to be careful. They brought their up back slash fullback position back into the ball game. Danny France, six foot, 236 pounder, in there for extra blocking. Play action. O'Hara in the back of the end zone, looking over the middle, off the hands, and it's going to be picked off. Tennessee State going the other way, diving for the pylon. That was picked off by Nick Harper, Jr. Young man knows a thing or two about playing cornerback. His dad played nine years in the NFL. And the younger Harper... Almost had his first career pick six, his first career interception. And now the Tigers are knocking on the door. Boy, what a play right there. And, you know, that's you got to capitalize. When you've got a team on the ropes like this, they just made a mistake. You've got to punch this in. To me, this is non-negotiable. If you're Tennessee State, you know where I'd go, Jake? Right off that left guard where they've had so much success. And they've got the big fella in. Tailback DeMarco Corbin, 6'1", 230-pounder. Let's see if they go that left side. They go right side. Corbin goes up the middle and bang. Tennessee State right back in it. And that's why you don't panic and go for it on fourth and three or try fake punt. You pin them back, trust your defense. And look, it paid off for you. And it looks like they call him short. I don't know if they called him short or if they're going for two. I think Tennessee State's going for two. Yeah, I would say that's, yeah, I was going to say I didn't think he was short at all. Uh, but yeah, you'll go for two. You didn't go for it earlier, what we were talking about, but instead you decide to go now. If you make this, you can tie it with a field goal. And I think they're going to have a timeout. Rethink it. Coach Reed says, hold on a minute. Timeout. Tennessee State, that is their first. So Tennessee State trying to make this a field goal game instead of a two-score game. It'll be a 30-second timeout. As Rod Reed will take 30 seconds to think it over. And I think that's a no-brainer because really, it, it, you're not really, to me, you're not risking anything by going for two right here because if you take the easy points, take the extra point, you're still down by four. You know, you're still, still going to have to score a touchdown to take the lead. However, you know, if, if the, the odds of it, if you make it, all of a sudden you could tie the game with a, with a field goal. So I think this is the obvious decision. As we get closer and closer to the, three, the third quarter ending, a minute left, Middle Tennessee with all three timeouts, Tennessee State with two after they just used their first. 
The Tennessee State fans starting to sense the momentum shift. They're starting to get back into it. They brought a lot of folks just a few miles down the road. So DeMarco Corbin has his first rushing touchdown on the season, the senior from Euless, Texas. And here we go, lining up for the two-point conversion. Hughes under center. Play action, looking for the end zone. And batted away, good defense. And not sure if we had a flag fall, but the officials are conferring again. Illegal formation on the offense. That penalty is declined. Tries no good. So the two-point conversion fails. Wouldn't have counted either way. But the Tigers get six off the interception. And we've got a five-point ball game with just a minute to go here in the third. You know, you look at, I'm not a gambling guy, but you look at the spread before this game, you look at, you know, the, some publications where people were talking about this game, and, you know, by all indications on paper, Middle Tennessee was supposed to run away with this game. And quite frankly, they've had a couple opportunities to really extend that lead to where maybe Tennessee State couldn't come back. Mm -hmm. But all the credit in the world to Coach Reed and his staff and the Tennessee State players, because every time it's gotten to that breaking point where they've got to make something happen or else the game could get out of hand, they've made the play time and time again. And now all of a sudden it's a five-point game, a minute to go here in the third, and they are right in this thing as we get set to wrap up third quarter action after this kickoff. And I've just really been impressed with the fight of this team. Mosley to kick. And England Chisholm will let it bounce in the blue. And Middle Tennessee will take over at the 25-yard line. So after that first quarter, game got a little, it was a little sloppy. It wasn't exactly the most entertaining. It wasn't the most clean of football, but really the three quarters since, or the two quarters since, I should say, have been very, very fun. Yeah, they have been fun, and in a word, I'd say kind of unexpected. I mean, just from the sense of you never know, A, when a team's going to score, B, how they're going to score, how a defense is going to come up with a stop. Are they going to block the extra point? Are they going to block a punt? Are they going to intercept the ball? I mean, it's just kind of been out of the out of left field, kind of the things that have happened. But, boy, as this one's unfolded, it's been fun. O'Hara looking across the middle. He's got a receiver. And it's Jaron Pierce again. And good enough for a first down as Middle Tennessee will move the chains to the 46-yard line. O'Hara now over 300 yards passing, 18 of 25, 309, and then some more. As C.J. Wyndham loses the football, but he is ruled down. Good enough for another first down, back-to-back -back first downs for the Blue Raiders. And don't be surprised to see Middle Tennessee hustle up to the line here and try to get this one off. But I don't really see uh, anybody from Tennessee State trying to argue that that was a fumble, but certainly I, I think it'd be worth arguing, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen. Clock ticking. Now at 20 seconds. Clapping the snap. O'Hara near side. Back to Pierce. And Pierce is diving, falling close to another first down. And I think he's got it. So stop the clock at 10 seconds. And Middle Tennessee will try and, eh, I guess they'll let the clock run. That is the end of the third quarter. So that'll do it for the third quarter. Middle Tennessee leads 24 to 19 here at Floyd Stadium. Don't go anywhere. We've got a great one. Are you ready? Of Chris Massaro, athletic director here at Middle Tennessee, enjoying tonight's game. His Blue Raiders lead 24 19 against their old Ohio Valley Conference foe. Tennessee State, the first time that these two teams have played one another since 19.
98. What were you doing in 1998? Uh, I was celebrating my fourth birthday. Nice. Chaton Mobley going to lower his shoulder, pick up a first down. And that's really the best run that we've seen from a Blue Raider not named Asher O'Hara all night. O'Hara leading the way again for the Blue Raiders on the ground. He has 82 yards rushing. They go right back to Mobley. He goes right back to the right side inside the 10, 5, close to the goal line. He's going to be just short. Yeah, and I wouldn't be surprised to see Middle Tennessee not substitute anybody. That way, Tennessee State can't get any big, beefy guys up there to try to stop their run. They've obviously seen something off the right side that they like. They've capitalized on it twice. Let's see if they go right back to the right here. That's what I would do. And off back to Mobley, and he's in. It's too easy. Chaton Mobley has his first rushing touchdown on the season. The leading rusher for the Blue Raiders a year ago has given Middle Tennessee a 30-19 to 19 lead. Three straight runs, same player, same side, same results. Cruz Holt out again to tack on another point for Middle. So 31 to 19 with 14 17 to go here in the fourth quarter. Ashton Mobley, one yard touchdown run, caps off a six play 75 yard drive. It took just under a minute 45. And Alex, that was a fantastic response from Middle Tennessee. A very, very efficient drive to separate themselves from Tennessee State here in the fourth. Yeah, they did it, and, and you know, they, they, they've they scored in a lot of different ways. They've scored moving the ball down the field piece by piece, chunk by chunk. They've scored with the deep ball and a quick strike ability. That time, I would still argue it was quick strike ability, just three plays, but that time you did it on the ground, and like you said, Asher O'Hara had been the, the leading rusher for this team all season, including up into this point tonight. He still is. But all of a sudden, now you're saying, okay, not just our quarterback's going to run. We're going to establish the run game. We saw something they liked, and they didn't go away from it. Too many coaches now. I say maybe this is just the uh, East Tennessean in me, but I just say they're getting cute. When they try to switch up and try to outthink their opponent, when sometimes if something's going good, just pull a Steve Spurrier. Go back to it again and again and <laughs> make them stop you. And that's exactly what Middle Tennessee did right there. And as you said, it was efficient. It was, it was on the ground. And it's everything Middle Tennessee fans wanted to see. As so you're saying if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Correct. Middle Tennessee has scored on three of their last four drives in the second half as Johnson will return to about the 27-yard line, and that's where Michael Hughes will take over with 14.09 to go in the fourth quarter. This is a statement drive for Michael Hughes. Although he's let his team down and they've gotten points, so he's got some tangible evidence of stuff he can do against this team tonight. I think he needs to go out and say through the air at some point in this drive, make a couple plays, maybe even with his legs if he gets out on the edge. But just something to where he can go, hey, guys, when you go back to that sideline after this drive, say, I got you, I got you. And also, I don't know if you saw it in the shot right there on the right side of the screen, Rosendahl, didn't have his helmet, but he was running along the sidelines. Rolling on the far sideline, picks up about six. I just say that to say I don't know if he would try to come back, but he, I mean, he looked like he was almost warming up over there, just his legs, but now he's kind of stationary. But so for right now, we'll stick to, to, to Hughes because he's the man. I think he's got to make a play. Roland, the running back, falling near the first down marker, and he's got it. I like this officiating crew. You know why, Jake? First off, they've been accurate, and I think they've done a really good job calling yep. the game. But yep. second off, a lot of chain gang measurements tonight. There have been yeah. a, lot of a lot of close call, probably five or six close calls that I can think of where it's like, oh, from my vantage point, I'm like, they're going to have to bring the chains out. Nope, this crew nope. makes a decision and goes with it. I second that notion. First and ten. Here comes Blankenship. Rolling near side. 
He is at the 50-yard line, and he is going to be close to another first down. Beautiful block on the edge right there, Steven Newbold. Not the biggest guy out there, but he just pancaked a defender. Kind of sprung. Roland already surpassing his career high in receiving yards tonight. And there's that big block you're talking about by Steven Newbold helping his fellow receiver out. And that is good enough for another first down. And a nice run by Seth Rowland as he's going to be just shy of a first down. Something I've noticed about Rowland, obviously there's a, there's a lot of good things he's done, but one thing that's just interesting is in a day and age where so many teams rotate wide receivers every two or three plays, Rowland does not come out very much for how much use he gets. And I mean, that guy has got to be an excellent excellent physical condition to be able to not only stay in there for as long as he does at a time but also be as effective as he is both as a uh, as a pass catcher and a runner after the catch and a blocker Roland in motion now Hughes looking deep looking for Roland on a comeback taken away by Reed Blankenship on the sideline they're gonna say incomplete Reed Blankenship just ripped that ball away. And if we review this, we're going to get another look. I mean, he his strength while he's outstretched like that just to yank the ball away from the defender. Watch his arms right here. He just says, I'll take that. Let's see if that left foot gets in. Oh, I think that right foot. Play is snapped. And it's going to be good enough for a first down, so... Even if it was, nice job by the TSU offense to not allow anybody take, to take a look at it. Yeah, it was smart football to get up there on the line and go ahead and snap it because I think they may have dodged a bullet right there based on that quick look at a replay we saw. All of a sudden, it's first down. Now you're in Middle Tennessee territory. Handoff up the middle. Tyson Render meets Roberson. Won't go down. Finally, whistle blows. And to Kendrick Roberson. Trying to encourage his offensive lineman up there. Yeah, I thought Roberson was going to get, you know, an easy four, six yards there right here. And all of a sudden, Render, he was blocked. And he just fights off the block. Sometimes an offensive lineman, it's about more than just getting in front of a guy. You've got to hold your blocks until you're running back and escape. That time, Render fought through it. Second and eight, swing pass right side. And that's going to be good enough for a first down. That's going to be Deron Johnson, the freshman from Springfield, Tennessee. And I'll just say this. Shout out to Shannon Harris, the offensive coordinator for Tennessee State, because when you got a backup quarterback in, I'll, I'll, I'll finish the thought after the play. Hughes is going to keep it around the right side and then wisely slide. I'm sure Rick Stock still wishes... Asher O'Hara would learn how to do that. When, you, when you've when you got a, a quarterback in there that, you know, he wasn't expecting to play a bunch this game maybe, you're not asking him to come in there and, and be a hero, play hero ball. You're getting quick passes out where there's not a lot of thought in it. You're just making decisions quickly, 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 and they're decisions that he can make. Roberson up the middle, untouched. Nobody was home for the Middle Tennessee defense. And to Kendrick Roberson. From 26 yards out, straight up the gut. And Tennessee State not going away. Not at all. I'm sitting here talking about the quarterback, and they say, hey, enough of the quarterback. Let's give it to the running back. He's been so successful here tonight. And once again, Roberson straight up the middle, and if he gets a gap, he's gone. Roberson's first touchdown run on the year. And Zeta's point after attempt is good. 31-26, five-point ball game with 10-10 to go. Don't go anywhere. This rivalry is not going anywhere. As the team physician, and he had been a stalwart in this community for well over 40 years, and he will be sorely missed. Short kickoff to England Chisholm. He's going to bowl his way over 
Past the 35 as more flags fly. So 10.03 to go, 31-26. Middle Tennessee hanging on to a five-point lead, but those pesky Tigers won't go away. A 10-play, 72-yard drive by the Tigers, capped off by a 26-yard touchdown run by to Kendrick Roberson. There are two fouls on the play. Has made this Holding close game. on the return team, number 22. That penalty is declined. Holding on the return team, number 15. That penalty will be half the distance to the goal. First down. I'm not going to lie to you. All I heard was holding once because the Tennessee State Band is jamming over there in the corner, and I love it. Oh, they are they are loud and they are proud, and for good reason. They are done a phenomenal job all game. But like you said, they're they're pointed right towards us, so uh, <laughs> you're getting a heavy dose of the Tennessee State Marching Band. Hey, I'm not complaining, man. The, the uh, halftime show was was phenomenal. I had uh, some Earth, Wind, and Fire, some Lizzo in there. Shaitan Mobley refusing to go down, finally brought down. I'm sure just shy of the 20 yard line as the Middle Tennessee State Band trying to respond. I'm sure there's some folks at home going, you know, Alex, I prefer their sound of the Tennessee State Band over your voice, if you would. <laughs> O'Hara hesitating around the left side, and he's going to scamper for a first down. He's getting up around 100 yards, O'Hara is, so we'll have to keep an eye on that. I think he's a couple yards shy. 27, or 20 of 27, 335 yards, three touchdowns, only one interception. And on the ground now, 10 carries, 92 yards. 9.2 for rushing attempt. That's, that's efficient. Brad Anderson up the middle, nowhere to go. As Manny Olenga, who's getting a lot of playing time tonight, was there to make the stop. Had four tackles last week in his debut against Mississippi Valley State. Born in the Congo, the Democratic Republic of Congo. Speaks four languages. Yeah, I, I saw that, and that's... I mean, that's impressive. I, I have enough trouble speaking one. Second and long, O'Hara looking. Here comes the pressure. Looking near sideline, has a receiver. But the ball squirts out as C.J. Windham couldn't hang on. And they list C.J. Windham. You know, there's such thing as program height. And believe me, folks, that's a real thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's I, a real I was thing. six foot in my high school basketball <laughs> program, trust me. But, but. They list Wyndham at six foot, and to me, he, he looks like he's gotten shorted a little bit on the program height because yeah. that is a big I dude. went ahead and made him 6'2 in my notes because. I believe it. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's a large guy, and he's not just tall. He's got some muscle on him. He is not a guy who, if I was, if I was a small cornerback, who I'd want to have to cover, and he's out on the, the wide side of the field at the bottom of your screen. Play action, here comes the pressure. Olinga can't bring down O'Hara. Now O'Hara around the right side being chased out of bounds. He's gonna have enough for the first down. But Jason Bryant finally able to track down O'Hara, but not after the redshirt sophomore picks up another first down. Yeah, that'll put him over the century mark. And Bryant. Closed in in a hurry. Came he across did. from the complete opposite side of the field. As O'Hara. Now. He's now over the 100 mark, yard mark. I was going to say, now, if you're Middle Tennessee, if you can start to, you start to get the feeling that you might score on this drive, I think you start slowing your momentum down a little bit. Mobley around the right side. Breaks one tackle. Pushes his way across midfield. And another first down for Middle Tennessee and the running game that was not there last weekend against Michigan is finally showing up here in the fourth quarter against the Tigers. And Mobley's a redshirt guy. He's a sophomore. He's been around for a while, got a lot of carries last year. Obviously, Middle Tennessee gets a lot of guys involved on offense, but he's just a really good-looking running back and still with a lot of football ahead of him, just a sophomore. 
and, and you see right there, it's not running, being a running back, it's not just about how fast can you run, how many guys can you run over. A lot of it's about vision, about how well do you have a feel for the game. And what I mean by that is you have patience. Can you read your blockers? Can you stay behind your blockers? You saw a little bit of everything from Mobley on that one. Mobley, the former linebacker, converted to running back in 2017, finds a seam here, lowers his shoulder, finally brought down by Nick Harper Jr., but three straight first downs for the Blue Raiders. And all of them on the ground, one by O'Hara and two by Mobley. Now, I'll remind you, a drive ago, the last time Middle Tennessee scored, how'd they do it? Three straight runs to Mobley off the right side. All three of these runs from O'Hara and Mobley, the last two, have been off the right side. They found something. They found a weakness that they that they like against that right side of that Tennessee State defense. And again, I would not go away from it until they stop you. Again, this Middle Tennessee offensive line, all five members getting their first start of their career, at least as a Blue Raider last week in the big house against Michigan. And as Mobley will take the pitch left for a handful. And Anderson going to give him a well-deserved blow. Give him a breather on the sideline for a minute. Anderson, a guy who's a playmaker as well when he gets the ball in his hands. And officials step in and say, hey, you got to give the defense a chance to sub. Let's see if Anderson gets involved. Middle really milking the clock now. Ten on the game clock. 5.30. In the quarter. Play action. O'Hara. Look it. Going for the end zone. He's got a man wide open. C.J. Windham just hanging out right there at the goal line. Coverage broke down. And a nice job by Asher O'Hara to find the six foot two senior, C.J. Windham. Yeah, Windham just kind of, yeah, that may be, I don't care if you're talking about from Pee Wee football when you're five or six years old. Up into this point, that may be the easiest touchdown he has and will ever catch in his life. I mean, he is wide open, and Wyndham seals the deal and catches that one in. And Four touchdown passes tonight for O'Hara as Wyndham catches his first on the season. And a nine-play, 85-yard drive, four minutes, 54 seconds, capped off by a 28-yard touchdown pass from Asher O'Hara every morning to get you caught up. Sign up now at ESPN.com slash daily. The last one wide open in the blue paint for six, giving Middle Tennessee a 12-point advantage with 5.16 to go here in the fourth quarter. Wyndham missed nine games last season, only had six catches, but three of those were for touchdowns. Yeah, that's a pretty good average. Speaking of numbers and pretty good. O'Hara, 22 of 30, 367 yards and four touchdowns. Hard to beat that. Johnson with the kickoff from just shy of the goal line, runs into a brick wall. I go over those numbers again for O'Hara because around the program, there was a little bit of chatter this week that Cunningham, the backup quarterback, sophomore for Middle Tennessee, might get a few snaps and you know, I, I don't know if you, and, I mean, obviously the lead is not very big. It's just 12 point, it's still a ball game. So I don't know how, if you're Coach Stockstill, you justify taking a guy like O'Hara out when he's having the type of night that he has. I mean, yeah, this he had, is, yeah, he had alluded and said, well, he didn't allude, he just flat out said that Chase Cunningham was going to get some reps tonight and going forward. Rowan going back the other way. Shoestring tackle. The handoff to Chris Rowan, tackled by Gregorian Patterson. As Patterson making the stop. And that almost turned into a big play as Cam Rosendahl is back out there for the Tigers. Good to see him back out there and you know they're going to have to make some plays not only through the pe through the passing game but they're going to have to make some plays downfield if they want to get back into this one. Rosendahl far sideline to Roland. Nice little pickup of about seven. 
of course, you think about that, and the two big plays they've had have not been long passes. They've Straight gone, passes, yeah. they've been passes that have gone for long games, but the ball hasn't exactly traveled a mile through the air on those plays. So they've got, they've got it in the right guy's hands, getting it out to three, getting it out to rolling. But eventually, Middle Tennessee State, or Middle Tennessee, excuse me, they're gonna have to make. They, they probably already made some adjustments as far as trying to stop those short passes from breaking long. So eventually you're going to have to stretch this def defense out, get the safeties moving backwards. Third and seven. And we've got flags flying and opposing offensive and defensive linemen pointing at one another. I think this is Tennessee State. On the offense, number 78, five-yard penalty, still third down. Goes against Raquan Allen, the senior from Georgia Military College, same place as... Cameron Rosendahl, actually a handful of players from the Georgia Military College. It's two rosters littered with Georgia and Tennessee talent from top to bottom, and they've got each team has got several just really, really good football. Here comes players. the pressure and the under underneath route just off the hands of Roberson, and I think if he would have caught it, he had room. But the Tigers are going to be forced to punt with 3.43 to go in the fourth quarter. Rod Reed hoping his defense can get a stop. If I'm Middle Tennessee, I think I almost pinned my ears back. You got close a few times earlier. You've gotten a couple blocks on special teams, not on punts, but having the lead, getting the ball back right here, they may choose, choose to play it safe, and I think we're going to get a yeah. timeout. I was getting ready to ask you, if you're Rod Reed, if you punt, you're essentially saying timeout. we're not going to win Middle this Tennessee. game, but if we go for it first timeout. on a fake, at least we're giving ourselves a shot. But we're going to take a break with 3.43 to go. Middle Tennessee up a dozen. Stay with us right here on ESPN3. ESPN.com slash daily. Fourth down and 12, 343 to go. And Tennessee State lined up in punt formation. And Middle Tennessee. So they'll play it safe. They do, and Caleb Mosley's punt is high and fair caught. At the 45-yard line. So Middle Tennessee up 38-26. Both teams have two timeouts remaining. And we were kind of talking during the break. A little surprised there that Rod Reed didn't go for it. A little bit, but not totally shocked. I mean, you've got 334 left. You do have two timeouts. Um, I mean, the pathway to come back and win this game is a long and winding road. But there is still a sliver of hope. I mean. You know, you get a turnover right here, but but basically you've got to get a stop right here. I mean, you can't you can't give up a couple first downs or this thing's over. Mobley up the middle and nowhere to go. Now falling forward as Raymond Horton wrapped him up but couldn't bring him down. Mobley able to pick up a few. And just extra effort right there. That's all that was. I and mean, it should have been a gain of about one. It ended up being a gain of almost four yards. Just a great individual effort by. Shaton Mobley just to, to fight for extra yards, never stopped his feet from turning. Second and seven, tight formation for the Blue Raiders. As everybody almost jumped. And as the clock is now under three minutes. Anderson around the left side, turns it up, he's got a first down. And that'll, in all likelihood, probably do it. But Tennessee one, State still has two timeouts. Yeah, they got two timeouts. They haven't used used any of the two yet. But one more first down, and that's that'd be pretty much it. You've got a strong stack formation to the right side. Lots of room on that side as well. The ground game for Middle Tennessee has really picked up in the second half as they are almost at the 200-yard mark as a team tonight. Coach Stockstill was asked in the press conference earlier in the week, you know, is that something he's going to try to come out and correct after last week? They didn't have many rushing yards. 67. 
Anderson spins and is brought down after a couple. And his response was pretty nonchalant, honestly. Yeah. I mean, he kind of just said, I mean, if they stack the box and we can't run the ball, we'll throw it. And that was kind of surprising to me. But, uh, you know, he basically, you know, I, I, you can say what you want, coach speak in a press conference, but after watching this team, particularly in the second, third, and fourth quarters, you can't tell me that there wasn't All a focus five. on the defense. On the five. five yard penalty, still first down. So tack on five more yards, and it stays first down for the Blue Raider. Probably in the backfield, as we are now under two minutes left in this ballgame. I'm surprised that they haven't used either of those two timeouts. I mean, you almost think at this point, if they get another first down right here, I wonder if Coach Reed may just say, I'm not going to call. Mobley, right side, breaking free inside the 30, inside the 20, 10, 5, pylon. Did he get there? Yes, he did. Shatan Mobley. Puts this game on ice. We're sitting up here talking about, can they get another first down to, to ice the game away? And Mobley says, first down, guys. I'm thinking touchdown. He has really impressed me in the second half. He's sort of taken over as the guy who's gotten the, 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 the workload here by and large, and he has really, really performed well in the last couple quarters. 38-yard touchdown run, and now the Blue Raiders have two timeout. Tennessee State rushers a final timeout. that have surpassed the century mark. Mobley, 104 <laughs> on nine attempts, averaging 11.5 per carry, and Asher O'Hara, 103 yards on 11 attempts, so just under nine and a half yards per carry and somewhere in that locker room middle tennessee's running back coach jeff beckles is going hey coach stockstill your quarterback's not going to lead this team in rushing and look at the stats he's got him by <laughs> one yard shaton mobley this is a great uh you know you talk about the running backs and we talked about o'hara and his running ability but really it all starts with it with the guys up Tennessee front State, and this no, offensive they, line and particularly that right side has, has really made an impact on this game, and they've had a really strong second half, and I thought they've played pretty well the whole game, even in pass blocking, but in run blocking in particular. When this Tennessee State team's gotten more worn out here later in the game, they've really taken advantage of it. Yeah, we mentioned the lack of experience up front from the Middle Tennessee offensive line, but they have really showed out tonight. They've done a great job at protecting Asher O'Hara, and they've done a great job creating lanes for Mobley and O'Hara. Cruz Holtz extra point is up and good, and it's a 19-point ball game with 129 to go. And every time Tennessee, Tennessee State would come back into this game with a big play, Middle Tennessee always had a response, and that's the mark of a good football team. Absolutely, and, and, and I'll say this for Tennessee State. I mean, this is a, a, a smaller school uh, coming up here to play a, a bigger school, and... The, the thing that's impressed me most, there have been a lot of impressive things. The two things I would say for Tennessee State that has impressed me most, as a team, I would say their fight every time it looked like MTSU. I, I think at the end there, their defense is just a little bit gassed. But every time Middle Tennessee would start to stretch out the lead and you thought, okay, they're going to go on to blow them out, Tennessee State would, would fight back with a touchdown drive and then get right back in the game. The other thing, Jake, besides their fight that's impressed me was – they're athletes on the edge on offense. Absolutely. How explosive they are. They could take literally, they could take it 97 yards to the house as they showed us. And Roland is, is obviously one of the main guys for them, but they've got other playmakers on offense. Uh, several of them I could name. I mean, they just, they've impressed me and really on those two facets. Kendrick Roberson's had a nice night. Newbolt has, a, has had a nice night as well as Johnson's going to be lassoed at the 16 yard line. But yeah, I agree. I don't, I don't think Tennessee State has anything to hang their head about tonight. Losing your quarterback at halftime, then him coming back later in the fourth quarter. Your yeah. offensive line being shuffled around because of injuries. Your secondary, with a lot of inexperienced players playing because both of your starting quarterbacks have been out. 
and with conference play coming up very soon, it's a, it's a really, obviously you want the kid to be okay regardless. It's more than just about football, but seeing that he is okay to come back in the game, uh, it's nice to see Rosendahl back in because yeah. conference play is coming up, and at the end of the day, their goals, when they set it the season, you know, at the beginning of the season, ultimately you want to win your conference, and uh, it's a lot easier to do that if you've got your starting quarterback out there. Rolling around the right side is going to have enough for a first down. And if you're not familiar with the uh, Cameron Rosendahl story, it's, it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, this is just his third start as the Tigers quarterback. He joined the team in 2018 at fall camp. He began the season as a third-string quarterback. Started the very last game of the season last year against UT Martin because both the starter and the backups were hurt. He came in, had three touchdown passes, including the game winner in overtime, but in 2017, he wasn't even playing football. He wasn't even in school. He was working a construction and a plumbing job that a neighbor had hooked him up with. But tight end coach Ben Johnson kept calling him throughout the year saying, hey, we've got a place for you here at Tennessee State. I want you to come to Tennessee State. You should come to Nashville. We've got a spot for you. But yeah, he wasn't playing. He was out. He played at Georgia Military College, and at the very End of his stint there, he had two shoulder surgeries, and he thought he wasn't going to play again. But Tennessee State called and gave him a shot. And here he is. Good for him. Good for Cam Rosendahl. And, I mean, that just kind of embodies what we've talked about with this Tennessee State team, the fighting, the never giving up, the, the fact that every time they've gotten punched, they've gotten right back up off the mat tonight. And, and fought back some more, and Rosendahl is no different than that, and you want your quarterback to lead to lead your team by example, and I think certainly he's done a good job of that. But what an exciting game after a little bit of a slow start. Jake, it's, it was a, a really, really fun one to watch. So after 1,000 yards of total offense in this one tonight, over 470 of those yards coming from Asher O'Hara himself. Middle Tennessee has their first win on the year, 45-26 against their old OVC rival. First time these two squads have played in 21 years, and it was a doozy. Asher O'Hara finished the night 22 of 30, 367 yards passing, four touchdowns, one pick. He ran for over 100, 103 yards on 11 carries. As Shatan Mobley also joined him in the 100-yard club on the ground, nine carries, 104 yards. As Cam Rosendahl for the Tigers finishes the night, 14 to 24 for 159 yards. Michael Hughes came in and did a really nice job for the Tigers, seven of eight for 100 yards. Middle Tennessee will play Duke at home for their next game before they hit the road to take on the Iowa Hawkeyes before coming back home to take on Marshall. Meanwhile, Tennessee State will take on Jackson State in Memphis next week before they take on Arkansas Pine Bluff at home. As Caitlin is with head coach Rick Stock still. Thanks, Jake. I'm here with head coach Rick Stocks. Well, congratulations on the win. Your offense really exploded in the second half. Talk about your performance by O'Hara and uh, Mobley in the second half. I thought we played better offensively in the second half. Asher made some nice plays with his feet running around. I thought at times he left the pocket early, you know, and, and ran. He had some, we had some receivers open that I think he could have thrown the ball. Uh, Shatan ran okay. You know, he missed some early runs. You know, he finished the last drive there better, but we got to run the ball. He's got to be better. We got to be better overall. Uh, we didn't tackle very good, especially the second half defensively. So uh, we got enough to work on getting ready for next week. Speaking of O'Hara, talk about just how much he ran tonight. Yeah, you know, like I said, he made some good plays with his feet, but I think after watching the film, he'll see that, you know, he probably left the pocket a little too early sometimes and uh, ran when he didn't have to because we had guys open downfield, but, you know, it's his second game. He'll get better as he goes along, but, you know, he did a nice job, um, you know, running our offense here this afternoon. All right, thank you. Congratulations. Appreciate it. Thank you. Back to you guys. Thank you, Caitlin, and thank you, Coach. Congrats on career win number 88. So for Caitlin Runyon and Alex Myers, I'm Jake Rose saying so long from Floyd Stadium where the final score is Middle Tennessee 45, Tennessee State 26.
All games airing on the ESPN family of networks are streaming live and are archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN. From Murfreesboro, good night, everybody.